Yeah. <laughs> Welcome on. to episode 21 of the Lego Podcast with myself, Andy Grant. Myself, Tom Wickshead. And we have Jay. What's happening? How you doing, mate? <laughs> people, I feel like Jay, people will just know you from Jay from Tattoo Fixers. That's it, innit? That's it. Now I'm just Jay, the tattoo fixer. That's it. I'm not even Jay Hutton anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I first met Jay on, uh, we were just saying then, probably yeah. episode one or two. Of, I, I think, yeah, I was saying to Tom before, I think it was episode one. Yeah, so, so a bit of context to the story. Anyone who doesn't know, when I got blown up in Afghanistan, I had my leg amputated 18 months later. Mm. There was a tattoo that said, you'll never walk alone. The leg was amputated and it left a tattoo, you'll never walk. <laughs> now, there's a picture that I use in my presentation and this picture's gone like viral. It's gone crazy, that picture of my stump, with yeah. you'll never walk. So I'm guessing someone from the show, Tattoo Fixers, one of the researchers, mm. had found out. They must have just looked on Twitter for dodgy tattoos and, yeah. and my tattoos came up. And I remember getting a, getting an email from someone from Tattoo Fixers, a show which obviously wasn't even out then Yeah. saying hi Andy we've heard about your little mishap of your tattoo we'd wondering if you would um, if you'd like to have it fixed and my initial thing was I've already got a few tattoos I thought well I don't want to fix because it's a funny story and it's yeah. you know I, I, I quite like the you'll never walk story <laughs> but if you want to kind of make something of it and give me a tattoo then then that'd be great yeah and then um, that's how the ball started rolling for me yeah how did how did you first kind of get involved in the show so what what happened was it's it's quite a long story, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll try and make it as short as possible. But they they contacted me on Twitter. <clears throat> um, I got a tweet saying we're casting for a new uh, show on E4. We're looking for tattoo artists. But because it was a tweet, I was just like, and it was just a random account. I was a bit like, this is some sort of joke. Cause it, like it it's didn't some... seem like the most professional way to be asked to go on TV. You know, yeah. you, I don't know what you imagine it to be like, but that's how it came about. So. I thought just in case I'll reply, so I wrote back to this lad. Is this like a private DM or no? This was a, a public really, tweet. Yeah, yeah so I, that's what I mean. I was just like, so I wrote back, and the, so then I followed the lad, and it, it turns out he was a casting researcher, um, or casting director, sorry, for Studio Lambert, who make tattoo fixes, and so he basically said, you know, we're casting for the show, we're looking for tattoos. Would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, cool. Um, so then I had a Skype call with him, um, and I was at my shop. And I went upstairs and had this Skype call in. Went really well. I was on the phone with him for about 10 minutes. And he was like, yeah, you know, this seems really good. Um, I'll be in touch. So I went downstairs and said to my brother, I've said, that, I think I've got that, you know. I don't, don't know what it is, but I think I've got it. And he was like, do you reckon? I was like, yeah. And uh, so anyway, he comes, comes back and said, oh, we'd like to do a screen test. We'll get some people to come down to your job and do a screen test with you. So I was like, cool. Have you ever been in front of a camera before? I was like, no. <laughs> So yeah, then a couple of the guys from Studio Lamp came down, uh, set up a camera a bit like this, and and then you they ask you questions and you talk, mate. So, <laughs> nerves is, like there's just two people. It's just like this, and you're so nervous. You're thinking, oh my god, how would I last? What did they ask you? So you, they just ask you questions, and you just got to look off camera, and they'll ask you questions, and just it's just how how you like you know how relaxed you are. Yeah, how relaxed you are, how you come across, you know. Do you, do you, I don't know what they're looking for, but obviously it worked. So. Um, yeah, but you're you're a hand, you're a good looking lad. I think that's how. <laughs> you know, no, but no, being serious though, no, like you could be. I'm not saying denying you. You, you we come on to it. You're a great tattoo artist, yeah, but also, me. I think it does got to help a little bit. Yo, you make me red. Like. <laughs> 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 I feel like there should be some candles here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yes, yeah, so it went from there, and then um, they left. They said, "Oh, we'll be in touch." And then I think it maybe a week or two weeks later, they were just like, "Yeah, congratulations, you're going to be on it." So I was like, I still didn't know what to expect. And, um, you know, they, they sort of told me that, you know, there was going to be like cameras in the walls and stuff, that sort of f vibe. I think that was to settle my nerves a little yeah. bit. Um, so, you know, thinking if you've got cameramen right in your face and stuff like that. Anyway, turn that got there. There was like, there was like four cameramen now. <laughs> oh, God. But it was really good, mate. The night before, I went down to London the night before. And that's when I met Sketch Paisley and uh, Lou at the time who was on it. Uh, and I'd never met them before, so we literally, luckily, we just we just clicked. The chemistry was there straight away, and then we started. Fit. This was actually this was originally just supposed to be a pilot episode. Yeah. So, and I didn't, mate, I didn't know what any of these terms even meant. And I was like, "What's a pilot episode?" You know, and they're like, "Oh, it'll go out, it'll be tested on air, see what it, you know, how well it does, whatever." So we went and filmed that. That I was down in London for a week, filmed that. Um, it didn't even go out on air because they took it back to the channel. And the channel loved it and commissioned it straight away for a series. So. Then that was, I think that was a before the Christmas time. What year would have this been then? Two, maybe 2015, I think. Oh, I think it was, yeah. Early, early 2015. Yeah. 
So I think that was filmed. I remember that being before Christmas, maybe September, November time, possibly. I don't know. And then, yeah, and then it, we started started filming the months leading up to that, and then it went out in June, I think, of the sum, following summer. So yeah, it didn't even go out as a pilot; it just went out as a series, and then. We were just like, I mean, me and Sketch, we used to, we met each other, we worked with each other a little bit after that, and then before it had even gone out on air, we used to be like, imagine if it takes off and people actually know who we are and all this stuff. <laughs> imagine, imagine if we were famous and all this stuff, and we were just like, oh, and then it just blew up, didn't it? Yeah. And it just went fucking crazy. What was that like after the like the day after that first <clears throat> episode? Then well, it was mad because like you just you see it most on social media because you, you start seeing followers going Durr. you put a picture up and it goes like, like, you know you start thinking fucking hell this is, this is weird like mm. suddenly everyone's just wants to know who you are and wants to know shit about you don't they and stuff so I mean it's well good but you know it, at first it, it, it can be quite overwhelming as well do you know what I mean yeah yeah we had um, we like, we've I've talked about this before but we went on another podcast um, uh, Dean and Tisha who were on Coronation Street yeah. and they said that instantly um, even when they were buying toilet paper or anything like that, they felt yeah. awkward going into the, like, yeah. sh- you know, and like yeah, that whole thing just blows my mind. It does, mate. Like, it just got from the, from the first episode to the first series was just like, whoa. And then series two really took off because one of the other artists left and then Alice came in. And I think when Alice came in as well, because she's such a character, it proper meshed us together. And there was even more chemistry there, more banter. And it just, I think that's what people bought into as well, because it wasn't just about tattoos. It was mm. more about the banter we have between each other. Yeah. Like studio life almost. Yeah. It? And it was, it just showed what it's like, you know, and that we're all actually pals and stuff. So people just, I think that's just what, it just rocketed, mate. And then mm. it was just like. For that first series then, because obviously and we'll come on to how you got into tattooing, but mm. you've, you've got your own business and stuff. Up. Yeah. What did, did they kind of say, look, we'll, like you're going to get paid for this or it's just a trial? How did they no, we, no, we got paid. We got paid like for it and stuff because obviously we, we all had our own studios as well. So we're going to spend time away from our studios. Mm. And so if we won't get paid, we, it's, it's a big risk to lose your money. And, and obviously, obviously the yeah. studio goes on the back burner then, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah they, we were paid and stuff. So that was good. Um, but yeah, like, you know, once you've got a shop and you're down in London and my shop's here, it's, it's a long, long way. But obviously the risk paid off. It's, of course it was going to, if it took off, it was it was great. And it was, mm. it just worked, mate. Mm. It was good. When, when you say take off, not not, this, not that this is a kind of way to judge how successful it was, but yeah. what was kind of your social media before and after? So <clears throat> basically my, I reckon, I think I had on Instagram, well, when before that, I think Twitter was a bit bigger at the time. Yeah, Twitter Instagram, was, yeah. Instagram started yeah. coming into it then. But Twitter, I'd, I'd built up my Twitter following on... <laughs> so it's a long story, but I... <laughs> this is how I did this, right? So uh, basically, when, when, t- when I got onto Twitter, all the celebrities were using it. So you remember back in the day, if you wanted to write to a celebrity, you had to write a letter to them. If you couldn't contact the celebrity, could you? Yeah, yeah. So then when, everyone, when Twitter came out, you could literally direct message them or send them a tweet or whatever. And I used to think... so. Even if they don't respond, they'll see what I write to them. So I thought, right, okay then. So I used to spam the fuck out of all celebrities that were on Twitter, yeah? I used to send the same tweet and put tattoos by Jay Hutton, follow me, and send a picture of my work. And I used to spam the shit out of everyone, no matter what they wrote. If I knew that they'd just written a tweet, whatever it was, I knew they were online, and the chance of them seeing that tweet would, you know, it was obvious. But So I'd just spam, 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 spam. I thought, they'll either block me or they'll follow me. Yeah, yeah. Loads of them followed me loads of well no a couple blocked me but you know yeah so that sort of like got some momentum then and people started following me so what i'd do then if it, like a major star started following me like i'd like the game the rapper started really, following yeah? me yeah pitbull started following me and just neo started following me so every time someone started following me i'd screenshot it whack it all over my social media and be like and then people start talking don't they yeah so I was, you know people going oh gosh. then the next minute i'm in my paper for being a local celebrity tattooist I tattooed celebrities in that because then I tattooed Kerry Katona then as a result of all this stuff and then I tattooed a lad off Geordie Shaw and then I, anytime anything was in the paper I just retweet that take pictures of it and just spam it all out I thought you know people get sick of it but at least they're seeing it yeah, yeah, they're yeah, sick yeah, of it or not they're going to see it Yeah. and so that's where the, I got noticed for tattoo fixers I think that's where they saw my tweet because I, I tattooed like Kerry Katona and they'd obviously thought I'd had a bit of a thing going so I'd built my following on um Twitter up to about 7,000 followers from, I don't know what it was, a few hundred maybe. So that was quite a lot at the time for, for just being a local tattooist, do you know what I mean? And then on Instagram, I, I think I had about 1,200 mm. 
And then it just obviously when the show took off. Mate, you're dropped. on two hundred thousand, I think now on Twitter. When I just looked, yeah, two hundred thousand odds. Yeah, it's just that is crazy, isn't it? Yeah, mate. When you just see these numbers flying up, and you're just thinking, God, these people, why are they even interested in me? Do you know, I'm mean? <laughs> <laughs> just a terrorist. It's, ama- it's just amazing. All this, the power of social yeah, media, isn't it? It's good. Yeah, it is, mate. It was doing bits for me before the, before the TV. So like, I mean, the TV just rockets you, doesn't it, into mm-hmm. somewhere? I done it. Um, I got asked to be an extra on Downton Abbey. Did you? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> they, needed, they needed someone, an amputee. So I um, I went down there. Uh, it was Helpful Heroes, the charity asked me and said, yeah. we've, been, we've been approached, they want an injured soldier. You're for doing it. I thought it'd be a laugh yeah. more than anything. Why not? So I went down and I'm not messing. I must be on it for less than five seconds. I mean, like two or three scenes, but yeah. less than five seconds. <laughs> After it was aired, I'm walking the dog. Some old woman said, was you on Downton Abbey last night? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking... <laughs> How the fuck that's you quality, isn't it? You know, and it's it's mad, isn't it? That's yeah. what TV that, then can do. Yeah, it's great. That, that's quality, mate. That's well good. It's funny. Yeah. It actually, just going off topic, that actually made me grow my hair because I had a skinhead in the Marines and oh. um, they put a wig on me and I put this wig on and I thought, you know what? I look all right with my <laughs> <hair>. <laughs> right, mate. <laughs> so I started to grow my hair a little bit after that. Oh, that's good. But, that's yeah. good. No, but social media is just insane now. Yeah. Like, like, like on, uh, like with you on Instagram, like, if you put a photo on, mm. not that like the amount of followers ultimately really matters, but mm. you know, half a million people, you yeah, know, that's, that's more than some networks get, like, yeah, y- it, you know, yeah. on on like prime time TV, yeah. you know, and, and you can hit that amount of people, it's just crazy, from, yeah. and it's free. That's what always fucking sit, you like, it's free, you don't have to pay a thing, that's what you I'm just saying, build yeah. it up like you did there, yeah, and then you know. That's it. it. Like you said, you know, some of these platforms, you know, these radio stations or TV companies and you get charged hundreds of thousands even to, <clears throat> to advertise on TV when some of them, some of these people who are in the public eye, you know, who've got like over millions of followers, you know, you're thinking, yeah, that, that's advertisement in itself. That's yeah. why, the, you know, when someone wears a bit of clothing that's in the public eye, people just jump on it, don't they? Because yeah. so-and-so's mm-hmm. wearing it because they've got like, what, 10, oh, McGregor, look at his whiskey, like it takes off like that because he's got... What, I think that turned over million. I turned over over a billion I think in its yeah. first year or something Mate, crazy did it? crazy isn't it like, it's, turned, yeah, it's a follow a lot, isn't it a lot of money yeah. fucking hell I didn't think it was that much yeah no it, it might don't quote me on that <laughs> but it was I know um, Thingy Bob started that tequila company and um, Diageo bought it for two or three hundred million oh who was it um, George Clooney really yeah yeah oh really yeah because apparently he was the highest paid actor Last year or the year before, because of uh, yeah. uh, George Clooney was, yeah, was I'm he? Sure. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, finds out yeah. how much McGregor's whiskey turned over. I'm sure yeah. it was a billion, not profit, but actually just turn over, making a fortune. I, I wouldn't That's fight probably. again if I was him. Hey, what's the point? I'd I, I'd walk away from from fighting if I was him now. Because uh, no, it's the risks involved. Yeah, in it. a billion. <clears throat> told you, fuck you now. So it was a billion. Yeah, what in the first year? I must have been. Can't remember. Really Six months worth of whiskey. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of whiskey, isn't it? <laughs> that's a lot of whiskey. I had a customer, because I'm a massive McGregor fan, and like that, that whiskey is hard to get hold of. Is it? In the UK, it's hard to get hold of. I don't know if it's come out. I might have come out in the UK now, but at the time, it was really, yeah, couldn't get hold of it. And then I had a customer, and I just, I don't know, I must have mentioned it in passing. I don't remember. And then he come in a few weeks after, and he was like, oh, I bought you a present, mate. Just say thanks for doing my tattoo. And I was like, what was it? It was in this box and he bought me the proper 12. He'd ordered it offline, come from America. I was like, fuck. Is it yeah. nice? Really, yeah. I haven't opened it yet. I mean, I'll <laughs> wait to crack that open. <laughs> yeah, Part of me sp- doesn't want to open it because I think one day it might be worse. I mean, you know yeah, what I mean? I've got a special an, one that open, open bottle here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good. Yeah. No, I'm sure it was uh, George Clooney. <clears throat> Sorry, I know we're this, this this is, that, that was a billion just in the US <clears throat> as well, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tequila. Well, that just shows you, doesn't he? He obviously, I mean, he, he might do, but. He obviously is not an expert in whiskey, but just his brand and yeah. everyone loving what he does, he's managed to yeah, that's it, isn't it? turn it into a huge success. He's just king of self-promotion, isn't he? Yeah, that, mm. is, that was it. Casamigos, founded by George Clooney, and it was purchased last uh, June 2017 by Diageo for 700 million. <laughs> and Diageo owned like Smirnoff, yeah. Guinness, fucking all the big brands. I think, oh, mate, it, it's... <laughs> yeah, I think people as well are kind of um, quite negative quite negative in the in, in sense where they think you know oh but it, it's hard like like before tattoo fixes even like yeah. you said then it's 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 work that goes into creating yeah, yeah. that profile That's and you know it, yeah. and and having the having the, the common sense to go i need to capitalize on this yeah. and do that it's and 
I think a lot of people have not haven't got that get up and go or that entrepreneurship if you think I think, you, I think that's it to be honest mate it's about having a bit of drive and determination to and you've got to want to do it like you know it's it's not easy to, it's not it's not you got to want you got to do you got to want to do things you don't want to do mm-hmm. yeah. like you know I don't want to get up at seven o'clock on a Sunday morning sometimes and going to work but I'm not going to work every Sunday but I've done that in the past yeah when I don't need to but you know I've got to do it it's got to be done do you know what I mean otherwise you know, what are you expecting to get out of it if you're not going to put the effort in? Mm. So you have to do the things you don't want to do as well mm. to make it work, so. And in, funny enough, what, what I think we've had three or four people on this podcast, yourself now included in that list, of people who are doing things that they really fucking enjoy as, a, as an actual job. Yeah. So Jamie Webster, who's obviously, yeah. you know, he's he's left his job now and yourself and there's been two, you know, Jazzy Dickens, the boxer, mm which is just like, it's so, it's quality to see from the other side of someone, yeah. you know, because it's so rare of people being able to do what they love as a job and yeah. a career and actually and actually make decent money out of it, yeah. you know, rather than, you know, so. That's it because, you know, how, I just think, how are you supposed to make something of yourself if, you, if you're not passionate about it? If you, you know, there's so many people, you're just going to work for somebody else and you spend your whole life working nine to five to retire at 60, 65, whatever. Mm. And then you'll live then. Why would you want to live then? You want to try and, I'd, I'd rather sacrifice my 20s or my 30s so I can just graft, 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 and then I can live longer just and just, you know, yeah, yeah. sort my family out and live a nice life that way. I don't want to work some 65 for someone else. Yeah. Mm. What's the point? Yeah. You're just constantly paying out, giving people your money and working to pay your bills. It's not life. Like, you no. don't get one life, mate. You've got to crack on and try yeah. and do your best with it. That's why I was excited to chat because not only the tattooing side, which I'm really interested in, but knowing you from when we first met those years ago, yeah. I've seen the kind of the, the work and, and, and you build up this brand and, and your yeah. tattooing. So it's, it's yeah. great to see. I thought, as interesting as as fun as it would be of a chat, I, I, always, I also thought this would be motivational as well because yeah. you're a business owner, you've started yeah, yeah. your business early on and you're doing, like Tom said, then something yeah. you love. That's it. It's all about doing something you love. You know, I, I, to be honest, when I was in school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like most kids, you know, when they're 16, you don't really know what you want to do, do you? So when I was 16, I stayed on to sixth form, you know, pissed around a little bit, really just, you know, didn't know, have a clue what I wanted to do. And it was only that I seen, uh, do you remember Miami Inc? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that was big over here then, wasn't it? So I'd watched that and I'd always been into my art. I'd always drawn as a kid. It was the only thing I was really good at. So when I saw that, that sort of made me think, oh, I want to draw some tattoos. And then my brother got tattooing. Uh, so my brother was getting tattooed around the corner in the shop around the corner from my house and I went and watched him and it just went from there but that's what sparked my interest into drawing again and you know I thought well this is the thing I'm really good at and then so I thought put all my focus into that and see what happens in it mm. and that's where it took off mate and that's that's what all I've done since I've started tattooing is just focused on tattooing and it just leads to different opportunities tattooing's great man it just it's just it changed my life I, I, I was working in Asda just, just stacking shell. Well, started on the fish can. Did you? Oh, I fucking hated that. <laughs> Stinking her fish wasn't the coolest thing to be doing. Do you know what I mean? Which Asda? So I worked in Asda in Kimmel Bay in North Wales. Oh right. Um, yeah. So I, when I when I first so you were on the 16, fish fish can first, and then did you get upgraded to? Uh... No, well, I worked in McDonald's when I was sixteen. So that was my first job. My first job was in McDonald's. When I, was I love that already. To just let me just because yeah. the amount of kids you think I can't work in Mackey's. I'm not doing that. But oh. the fact that people can see you as a success yeah. now, and you said, "Listen, but yeah, I started off in Mackey's." It is, mate. It's just you know, basically, my mum and dad have always just, just said, you know, if you want want something, you got to work for it. So when I was 16, my dad was like, "You need to get a job." So straight away went and got a job. I, do you know what? When I went to my interview in McDonald's, I was the only one that turned up in a suit. <laughs> and I think even the manager looked at me and went, "Fuck you, go fucking on, mate, you posh fucker." <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have dinner with me, mate. Just come get in the kitchen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so anyway, I got the done. Yeah. Week. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, no, I fucking hated it. I'd like the fact that I got a bit of money. Like, yeah. but I hated that. But I stayed there, stuck it out for a couple of years to pay for my car and you know, pay, pay to run my car and stuff like that. And then I moved to McDonald's, uh, moved to Asda. And then when I got the job in Asda, I thought, you know, that felt like an upgrade to me. I, I liked Asda. Do you know what I mean? So I got there and I was thinking, oh, please, I just want to be on the you know, the, the music department, if anything. <laughs> and they go, <laughs> go around the corner. There's about 20 people in the room and they get to giving out, up, you know, all these things, you're going to be on music. And I thought, fuck, music's gone. I'm going to be on that. <laughs> so they were like, oh, I was thinking, what could I be on next? Maybe the grocery bit, that'll be all right. I can hide behind something, like, you know, do yeah, some yeah, shit yeah. in the back. No, that went, oh, God. And she came over with green hat, 
fish counter. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my God, mate. I was like, what, 17 just turned 18? That is not a job you want to be doing. No. It wasn't the coolest job in the world. but With the apron oh, on and everything. Apron on, green yeah. hat, white shirt, stinking a fish. <laughs> Awful, mate. <laughs> well, oh, I just hate it. I'm not knocking it for anyone who doesn't yeah, yeah. mate. I hated it. Absolutely, I thought, God, get, got to get out of this. That's and then I did get upgraded to beers, wine, and spirits. Did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that we've got it. similar upbringings there. I went to sixth form, didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I also got a job in a supermarket. Did you? Yeah. Sainsbury's. Oh, yeah. was it? Yeah, Sainsbury's, maybe so. eh? Rivals. Uh, I, was on, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was on produce. Was yeah. it, yeah? Yeah, so I all the beds, yeah. yeah. How long did yeah. you work there for? About six months. It was just when, when I was waiting to join the Marines. I had kind of like six months, but my application went in to when I started training. How old were you when you joined the Marines? 17. 17, yeah. Mm. Oh, it's, yeah. it's young, that, isn't it? That, that is young, it. man. Did you when know you, you wanted to do but, that? Yeah. No. Nah. But like yourself, mate, I kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I was <clears> clever <throat> enough to go to sixth form. Yeah. And then I think I just would have plodded on to university, I think, until I saw an advert for the Marines. and thought yeah. I was always quite fit and active and gave yeah. that a go. But I never really added... Um, I wasn't like very talented at anything in particular. For yeah. example, you was a bit drawing. <clears throat> so I just kind of I swept along with the whole idea of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good, man. So I, had a, I had a paper round when I was uh, 13. 13 paper round? <laughs> yeah. I had yeah. a paper round, yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I've everyone, worked everyone like 12. I had a paper round when I was 12. Yeah. I yeah collect, two collect, paper rounds, actually. I did, yeah. I collected milk money as well. Did you, yeah? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> I've, been, I've been to 11 a reef as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Yeah, nah, I do think it's so important that that kind of thing of... Of get whether it's <clears throat> collecting milk money, McDonald's, Sainsbury's, as that. Yeah. Getting a job early on. Hundred oh. percent. There's nothing worse than I, when when kid or pe- parents don't make their kids have a job until even past university yeah. or the first time. Some sometimes it, like friends of mine, first ever job <coughs> they've had is just after university. Really? Which, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy, and isn't it? How will you funded? Oh, this is all Tom's rich friends, isn't it? <laughs> it's just parents, isn't it? Yeah. But I think it's a fucking completely the wrong way to, to do it. A hundred percent. As soon as as soon as as soon as you, you feel entitled that oh, I've always got my parents to fall back on, yeah. then you've you've fucking lost the game. See, I, I, yeah, I think that sets you up for a fall well later on yeah. in life as well, mm. without even realising it, because you know, if you once you rely on that backup all the time, when that backup's gone, what are you going to do? Yeah. Where are you exactly. going to be? How are you going to get through anything? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's the same analogy. I think that is, you know, <clears throat> you hear people say, I don't ever want, like, I can't quit if they're doing, for example, an exercise because once you quit once, it yeah. becomes easier to quit the second time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's like that thing, you know, if you've never had <clears throat> that struggle when you're a kid doing a paper round and it's pissing down and you don't want to get up but you have to. Yeah. If you've never had that, it's the same thing, you know. Well, my dad helped me out last week, so. You let I need, when again. I needed money, yeah. so you let me out again. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's like that. We would trust fun kids, isn't it? And things like not that I feel sorry for them at all. I literally don't feel sorry for them. But I do think that if you did get given a shitload of money when you're sixteen, seventeen, and and like millions, and some kids do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. That you know, there is something inside me as a person that I'd feel that what have I really got going for myself? Do you, do you, you yeah. know, like mm. you know, it could cause all sorts of problems for you. You like you don't you start losing who you are. You're thinking, oh god, I don't know who I am anymore. Do you know what mm. I mean? Because you've you've had it so easy. Mm. So if you don't have tough things that happen to you, how are you supposed to appreciate anything yeah. good that happens totally. to you? And then I look at Dan Bilzerian's Instagram page and think, fucking hell. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, just give me all the yeah. money. <laughs> yeah, he's doing all right. Yeah. Although yeah. he's had, hasn't he had a couple of heart attacks? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple it, of heart attacks, mate, he? It is, he is the best interview ever. He does this thing. And he says he, he's had like his third heart attack or something. He's in hospital. Yeah. For anyone YouTube, this it's a great interview. And uh, he's been like partying. He's he's taking steroids. He's taking smoking weed. He's I've taking ecstasy. It, yeah. And then he says, his, "Have you seen the interview where his mum and dad and his girlfriend are in the room?" Oh no. He wakes up in this heart attack. Dan Bilzerian. And the doctor says, "Listen, Dan, it's a very serious situation. You need to tell me everything you've been putting in your body the last 24, 48 hours." <clears throat> so he's like, "Right, I've." I've being taken steroids and his dad's like oh, Dan come on you know I didn't think you took that and then the doctor said anything else he says well yeah you know t- took a bit of ecstasy and then his mum's like fucking hell Dan you know you're taking drugs and you know, all this as well <laughs> and then the doctor goes is there anything else and he goes yeah I took some Viagra and then his missus is like <laughs> 
<laughs> but the way he tells the story, like he's getting this disappointment off his dad first, then his mum, and then he's like, he's been the strippers and he's taken Viagra and his missus is going, what the fuck? He's a madman, isn't he? He's like, fucking insane. That's he's why crazy. he had the heart attack, because he's taking like, he's smoking weird, that's slowing him down or whatever, then he's taking ecstasy. To yeah. To yeah, and then the Viagra thing he brought, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. mad, isn't it's it? It's a funny YouTube clip though, it's... Uh, yeah, he's quality like, isn't he? But to be fair, on the whole, trust, like I say, if you are going to have that money and you fucking, you do what Dan <laughs> Rosarian's doing, I'd like to think. Yeah. <laughs> well, Although, you'd go mad with it, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah Especially you would. Especially that young, right, if you go young with it. Yeah, you would go mad. You've got no, um, you know, you, you can't hold yourself back, can you? You've just got, you know, what... <laughs> you haven't had enough life experience to know no, to not no. hold back, have you? Yeah. Like when, I, when I got and again it wasn't it wasn't Dan Vilsarian's money, but I, I, I literally got like a bit of money when I got injured. Yeah. And that changed that that was fucking awkward because I didn't felt as feel deserving of it because I kind of coped quite well with losing my leg. I still felt I'm just still a normal lad, but I've been given this money and it was again nowhere near millions or nothing, but yeah. it was still more money than I'd ever had before. Yeah. And it's easy to see how you become irresponsible. Yeah. Because you just fucking get given this money. Yeah. It's, it's fucking dangerous, like. It is, isn't it? It's just mad, isn't it? But what do you, but I do but think would that, you turn it down? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But that, that thing, no, like I read um, loads of autobiographies and one of my favourites is, is Luis Suarez's and he, he talks about, you know, he's getting a, a, like three or four buses to get to training. You know, I know it's not working as they're all collecting milk, but like yeah. that sacrifice and the hardship getting up in the morning yeah. and having to get two or three buses hours and down in, in, from shanty towns into... You think where he is now, you think fucking fair play, you worth deserve it. Worth it all, yeah. Yeah. But, but I tell you what, it's about, I think it's more about taking the, you know, putting yourself and making, doing all that effort, knowing that it still might not happen, but just believing that it is going to happen. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, that's the only way you're going to, you could just give up and, you know, take the opportunity away from yourself completely and just give up. But what good's that going to do? You might as well take each day, like you were saying, going to training every day in the rains, you know, didn't know it was going to happen, but just hope yeah, they yeah. would yeah that, well, why shouldn't you just be like that what what we've got to lose do you know what mm. I mean you've got yeah. to be like that haven't you yeah well, and J- totally. J- Jazza Dickens said the same thing the other week when he was talking about money and he was like um, he was, he's worried about he's worried about becoming too comfortable mm. with with boxing money and not that he's you know but <clears throat> worried yeah. about becoming too comfortable that he wouldn't have then have that drive same that, drive yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that, I can imagine you, you can imagine can't you like you know I suppose I'm surprised Conor McGregor as well didn't with the amount of money that he that how he still had that yeah that drive whether he spent it or I've no idea <laughs> Floyd Mayweather as well like he's he's been a millionaire for, for years hasn't he but yet he's yeah. still fighting yeah and you think that is some level of dedication to just have it all yeah, but yeah, he, he still got that drive to get up in the morning and train and fight. And that's it. Fifty. What is he in his forties and he's fifty and now. You know, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't even have to fight McGregor, did he? No. You know, he's he's set. For fucking, you know, generations yeah. and generations. He set everyone up, hasn't he? But yeah. you know, to do that and then still win at his age. And I think that comes from you. like that drive because you know he's not doing that if he's grown up with money. He no. has not got that drive. No if he's been given money as a kid, you know, that's he's nice. had fuck all grown up. Mm. And that's, that, that is the drive, isn't it? You wonder as well, like, that would have been so long ago that he was in that position that you think, would he, like, he's done well to not forget that as well because yeah. he's had so long with money. That's a good yeah. point, yeah. Yeah, that he's not forgot about that and he still manages to do, like you said, dedicate himself and still win at 40 years old. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy, like, mm. that's mad. It's all mentality though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when, when you're doing your, you kind of... <clears throat> in sixth form so are you, are you just drawing all the time are you one of those kids in school that just you know pick up a pattern? well to be honest I well I can't remember not not drawing my earliest memories I can I, I was drawing I can't remember not drawing so like I can always remember just coming home from school every single day <laughs> walking through the door taking all my clothes off to stripping down to my pants <laughs> just lying on my living room floor drawer. don't ask me why I used to do that <laughs> my mum and dad used to be like there he is in his pants again <laughs> So I just lie on the living room floor and I just draw all night till I go to bed and I used to every night, every single night. And my brother used to just go out and just, you know, cause havoc and whatever. And I just used to stay in and draw. He's three years older than me. And so that's all I remember doing. And then in school... And what are you drawing? Like anything? Footballers. I was well into football, so I used to draw portraits of footballers and stuff. So I did used to have um, like a big portfolio. I've been doing it since I was like, I think I was about five or six. And I had it right up till I was about 13 like a portfolio full of drawings I'd done. And you can see like the progression of how much better I'd got over the years and stuff. And then um, 
when I got to high school, what before art was, um, you picked it for GCSE when it was compulsory, I did art and then my teacher had given me a C and an F at grade five, which was the worst F at grade you could possibly get. And I remember thinking, that's not fucking right. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I was thinking, yeah. not that I was never, I was never like cocky or I was well shy, like when I was in school, like, so I was never a cock, but I thought, I know I'm good at drawing, but I never said that to her. I wouldn't have the balls to say that to her. So I took my report home. My dad was fucking fuming. He was like, because my dad had seen, you know, my mum and dad had seen me every night, seen how good I was at drawing. So he wasn't happy. So then parents evening come around and I went to parents evening and uh, I walked up to her and she, and I said, um, hi. And she goes, who are you? And I went, uh, Jamie Hutton. And she went, do I teach you? And, and my dad was behind me with my portfolio, my portfolio of joints. He goes, well, it's funny you should say that. Have a look at this because you've given him this. And she was like, and she was like, she was embarrassed like, and I was embarrassed because all the kids were looking. I was like, oh God. And my dad was going, no, 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 keep look, 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 look at them. Brilliant. Like, look, look at them because you've marked him here and you obviously aren't taking notice of what he's doing here. So I, from that, I got moved to another class and I got moved to a different, uh, a different art class. And I thought, right, do you know what? I'm going to, prove this teacher wrong and I drew I had a Liverpool watch and I drew my watch off my wrist as homework and I brought it in the next day and I got an A and then so my art teacher my new art teacher had given me an A so I was like oh that's good <laughs> and then it came round to picking art for GCSE and I thought I can't be bothered because I just, it sort of lost me a little bit I thought you know I yeah. just at the time I was a kid and I was interested in football and stuff and I thought I just, she doesn't know what she's talking about she does but then you know what you're going to get if you choose it for GCSE you're going to do the same again so I just left it. I didn't. I stopped drawing for about two years then. Really? And it was only then when I watched my Munich that I started drawing again. Yeah. So I stopped drawing from well longer than that actually. That was fourteen. I doodle here and there, but I never. I never drew properly again. Like after that for a bit. So about three, maybe three, four years actually after that, and then my Munich sparked my thing for drawing again. And then I could because I was watching that, I was thinking, oh, hell, you can actually make money out of drawing here as well. Mm. You know, I'm drawing on people's skin. So I thought that's that's pretty cool. So then that sparked me interest in that then. Yeah, because really, I always have that image of that there's like two avenues. Either you go down like the architecture <clears throat> route or yeah. that sort of, and then the route that you've gone down. Yeah. Because there's, there's, to actually make money out of art yeah. is quite fucking difficult, isn't it, it? Exactly. That's what I mean. Like, I knew I was good at art, but how the fuck could I ever make money out of it? Mm. And before, like, to be fair, before you watch TV shows like Miami, where that really introduced the public to what tattooing's like, you have a preconception of what tattooing is. You know, you think of, you know, some people, how they used to think of old sailor tattoos and all this stuff. <laughs> the they used to judge people. But then suddenly you're watching like Miami Ink stuff and thinking, oh, that tattoo is actually quite a nice person and he's really good in it. And that doesn't look like they tattoos look 30 years ago. So, you know, it changed the way I looked at tattoos and how people looked at them as well. So my dad didn't even used to like tattoos, didn't even like us having tattoos because of the same reason and then once we got into it he was like it's amazing mm. so. do you think it's changed that the the evolution <clears throat> of tattoos then so it's got, God, yeah. got over the past like since you yeah. first got into it to 2019 it's just a oh, completely different industry yeah, it's completely different to when i started tattooing um yeah when i started i started tattooing when i was 18 and yeah it's, it's changed massively since then like you just, some of the stuff people banging out now they weren't banging out 10 years ago mm. But that's, that says where it's at now and where's it going to be in another 10, 10, 20 years. You know, we look at stuff now that's amazing. I think where we'll be in 20, 20 more years with how much the machines will be better and you know, there'll probably be a machine tattooing people's skin, won't they? Yeah. We'll be all be out of a job. AI. <laughs> yeah. what, what is the career pathway then? Is it for a bum <clears throat> artist who wants to get into tattooing? I mean, what, how did you even... So, like I said, my brother was getting tattooed at a shop around the corner from mine and uh, I was like, oh, can I come watch? And he was like, yeah. So I went around then, he said to the lad, he's like, oh, can you come in and watch me getting tattoos? And I was like, yeah. So I went in and uh, while I was in there, my brother said, said to the lad, Andy, who owned the shop at the time, um, he said, oh, my brother's really good at drawing, like he, he's well in tattoo. And he was like, oh, is he? Yeah. And I'd done a couple of drawings because I planned on taking some drawings in, but I'd only done two in my spare time. And then, but I had them in the car and Dan was like, go and get him go and show him and I was like no 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 I don't want to do that like I haven't got enough yet and and uh, Andy was like no let's have a look at him so I come in and he was like fucking hell you done them yeah I said yeah he goes um, tell you what he goes go away come back in a week and do a couple more and then we'll, we'll see from there so I thought right 
I'm going to smash this now. So I went away and I spent, I basically drew um, rappers, basically, um, like Biggie, Tupac and all these ones. But I spent like five hours on each portrait a night for the week. They took fucking ages. Yeah. But I drew them all on one piece of paper and then spent five hours on each of them that, for the night. And then I took them back in. So I come back in on the Monday. And uh, I used to work with this guy who'd been tattooing 30 years, big, massive tattooist, quality guy he was called Dill. And uh, again, I was still quite a shy kid then and stuff. So I walked in and he, he big guy leaning over the table like this. And I was like, oh, um, I've come to show Andy my drawings. And he was like, looks at me over his glasses, looks me up and down. And I was thinking, <laughs> and he goes, Andy. And he goes, yeah, from the back. He goes, that skinny fucking kid from last week's here. <laughs> he goes, wants to show you his drawings. I was just like, oh, fucking okay, no. hell. <laughs> so he goes, walked in and I showed him. He was tattooing us. He goes, uh, so, look, so I opened them up and he went, he goes, you done them? I said, yeah. He goes, you traced them? I said, no. He goes, fucking hell, you'll start on Monday. So I come in on the, the Monday and, uh, you get, and at the time he was like, just, you know, I think he probably just thought, Mate, see, he's testing the water with me, seeing if I'm going to make an effort and come in. So he's like, you need to come in at, we open at 10, come in at 11 if you want. So I was there at 11, walked in. And then it was, yeah, basically then it was just apprentice then. So it was, I was still working in Asda at the time. So I was working in Asda Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'd go to the shop Thursday, Friday, Saturday. On the beer counter, not the fish. On the beer counter by this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... I'd go there for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and I'd spend as much time in the shop as I could possibly get in there. Mate, you know that that, that <clears throat> a saying I love, and it just sums up what you've got. If people like call you lucky, people might go, "Oh, I think luck is when um, preparation meets uh, opportunity." Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You've been prepared. You've had that stuff. It's been a passion. Yeah. This opportunities arose. Yeah. And you've just been boom, prepared for it. Well, to be honest, I think it was as well, mate. I was thinking, you know, I hated working at, in Asda. I hated working at McDonald's. I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do in my life. And I finally found something that I thought, I'm good at this. And if I stick at it, I could be really good at it. And I'd seen like, you know, how successful you can be on Miami. I'd, I'd look at these tattoos and think, well, they're on TV doing it. They're fucking famous tattooists, you know. Maybe I could be a famous tattoo. You know, these things go through your head. Yeah. Not that you ever think that it's genuinely going to happen. Maybe it would, but you, you just have ideas that you think, oh, and it gets you excited, do you know what I mean? So then you, it drives you to carry on going and stuff. So, and to be, I, I remember being like six months in thinking, I can't get the fucking hang of this. Six months of tattooing and thinking, fucking hell, I, I might get, I almost was so close to just sacking it off and thinking. Why? Because with tattooing, it, it's hard to explain, but it's completely different to drawing. It, I mean, you've got to be able to have the, you know, the technical ability to draw but then using the machine that's vibrating, it's heavy, then you've got one chance on one person's skin while they're in pain and they're moving at the same time. You're probably shaking as well because you're nervous. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you've you got to get through all that and, then, and, then, like that and then do a tattoo. And it's got to be as good as it can possibly be because that person's going to walk around with it forever. So there'd be times where I do, a, a for the time I was in, a decent tattoo and then I'd do a shit one. And I'd be thinking, how, how did that go like that? You know, and then you do a couple of really good ones and you think, and then the next one would be a bit ropey and you'd think, what the fuck? You know, your head would fall off a little bit with it mm. and I'd just be like, oh. mm. and then you'd see all the lads who are established in the shop banging out decent work and great work and stuff and you'd be thinking, I'm miles off this. Mm. So then you start thinking, you doubt yourself a little bit, don't you? And then, But then I just thought, nah, just fucking push through. Mm. Just, just determination then got me through it really so yeah what was then, the first tattoo what, what, can you remember the, your first yeah, tattoo I did yeah I tattooed um, I t <laughs> my, my, one of my closest mates his older brother spitting everywhere there <laughs> had, um, had a little tribal on his arm that he wanted covering up F cover up funnily enough <laughs> 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 forgot about that um, yeah and uh, Andy the boss of the shop had um, drawn like a cover up over it for me it was just a bit of, like Polynesian tribal to cover it over yeah, and I, and it took me, mate, it, what would take me now probably an hour max took me about five and a half hours and I didn't even finish it. One of the girls had to finish it before me there, one of the other tattoos, yeah, because I was just shaking on this down And he's there sweating yeah. five hours. Oh, he was a loony. His brother was a <laughs> lunatic. I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I was shitting myself. <laughs> well, I think cool, he's still it? got it, actually. I, think he's, I don't think he's had it lazed off. Should do. Yeah. <laughs> that would be, be nerve-wracking, though, like thinking... And if I fuck this up, yeah, like they're gonna be walking around. I mean, yeah, that's the thing as well. You, th you, th you're thinking at the time, 
it's word of mouth here. So that person's going to walk out, they're going to go home, they're probably going to show five or six family or friends, or whatever, and they're going to be like, they're either going to go, oh, that's good, because a lot of people don't even know what a good tattoo is, in all honesty. So, you know, but then for the ones that do, they're going to be like, what mm. the fuck is that? <laughs> Who did that? That lad, that's the apprentice in that shot, for all don't go to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Suddenly you, you but then, I don't know, I don't know, mate, I, I did some good stuff and then, yeah, it just took. I don't know. Just and then, and then, so when going. when was the time where you thought I'm going to open my own business here and do it do it on my own? So I've been at the. Shop. I weren't actually looking uh, for my own business. Um, I'd been working at the shop for three years. I loved it. All lads were great. Andy gave me the opportunity to tattoo. So I wouldn't even be a tattooist if it wasn't for him giving me the opportunity. So I was well grateful for that. Um, and then I've been working there three years. Like I said, I weren't looking for the for the opportunity. But then my dad's mate <clears throat> um, owned and owned my. The, the building I'm in now in Ellesmere Port, which is a good 45 minutes away from where I used to work. And uh, he, he he just, my dad had just mentioned in passing to him that I was tattooing because he said, oh, how's the lads and stuff? And he said, oh, Jay's a tattooist and stuff like that. And he goes, oh, I've got a property if he wants it, you know, to rent or whatever. So then, yeah, I got told that. And I was just like, I would, like I said, I weren't looking to leave. I was happy where I was. I liked the place, liked the lads and stuff like that. But I thought, you know, I might never get this opportunity again. Mm. also I was 21 so I was a bit thinking fucking hell you know I, I feel I still feel like I haven't been in this game long enough to open my own studio but then I thought I just kept thinking fuck it yeah. do you know what I mean just just give it a blast and that's what happened so I, I went and opened the shop um, at yeah. 21 mate that's a young age to be a business owner yeah I know it's, yeah it's mad I look back at it now I think fucking hell yeah it's mad but yeah so I opened that and I'd prepared that nobody was going to walk through that shop for three months. I'd saved money to make sure I could pay the bills for it. And the morning I opened the big space, I, I took my brother on as the shop manager and taught, was teaching him to tattoo as well. Um, so we we opened the shop on the day, like, and I remember thinking, and it, I was opening at 10 o'clock and at half nine people were knocking on the door to come in. Yeah. I thought, fuck wow. me. This could work, <laughs> and it was like that. Just, just through word of mouth, then, or people. Yeah, yeah like I, I, like I'd, I'd done some like advertising, like I'd, I'd paid for like leaflets to be handed out and stuff like that, and put signs up on the street. Applied to the council to have signs put out on the street and stuff like that, um, where people were walking past. Because my shop is sort of down, like down a driveway, but it's like down. It looks like an alleyway, but it's a driveway, mm. and it's behind the main street. So unless you're looking for it, you won't find it. Um, so yeah, I had to get signs put out at the front and stuff like that so people would actually even notice it was even there. Um, so yeah, and then like I said, it just, people, I was do, banging out good tattoos and then my reputation got really good around there and that was it. I was booked up for like six months at a time then. So that was, yeah. I, mean, I love hearing stories like that, 21 and you're like, fuck, <laughs> I'm opening my own shop. Bro. Yeah. I, I love it, man. It's inspirational. Yeah, it's, it's like, it <laughs> motivates me now to think, and there's more I need to be doing. Like I, just, I, mean, just, I love stories like that. It's just I, I don't know. I think you, just, I, I, you know I've, I think everybody has a bit of it, everyone has a bit of self doubt, don't they? We all yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. I think it's just how you manage it and how you'll whether you you it's sink or swim in it. Yeah. Like you get the opportunity, you could go. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah. About a couple of years. Well, that shop's gone now. Mm. Now you're struggling to look for another shop in an area. It's got the right. You know, you've got the right landlord, you know, all the, all the shit that goes with it. Yeah. I thought, fuck it, why not? Just and and things, them, those opportunities, they're never ever perfect, are they? Like, no. So you, you, if you're going to wait around for the perfect time and the perfect shop and the <clears> perfect, <throat> it, stop looking because it's, it's yeah. never going to happen That's like it. that. Yeah. No, and the, the thing is as well, once I'd opened, I thought, the dr what pushed me even more to have the drive was then I thought, well, it's all on me now. You know, I've got to pay the bills here. I wasn't in the other shop. That yeah. was his shop. Yeah, exactly. This is my shop. I've got to pay the bills. If this fucking falls flat on its face, it's on me. Yeah. Plus, everybody that I knew had known, was knowing that I was opening my own shop and I kept thinking, I'm not fucking having people saying, <laughs> oh, we tried yeah. and it didn't work. No way. Yeah. So I thought, so you just graft then. You just That's what pushes you to do it, then. Mm. You just graft and graft and graft. Because usually, the, like, you get an idea you suddenly get obsessed with this idea yeah. and then you delve into that idea a little bit more and think, oh, I've got to pay VAT now, I've got to pay rates. Yeah. And then slowly you get turned off it, don't you? Yeah. Whereas like, if you just go, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, but then that's why, that's what made me start thinking, you know, when I said I started spamming the fuck out of people on Twitter, that's because when I opened the shop, I kept thinking, I knew there was two other shops in the area and I was thinking, I've got to make my shop different. I've got mm. to make my shop, because they could go to all three of us or... 
but what's going to make them come to me? And I thought, well, people need to buy into me, not just my work, you know. So, you know, I, the people come there, they get offered tea. I know it's only little things like tea and coffee and I've got a telly on there, watch films. I even get it now. People are like, fucking hell, it's like being at home. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Like I've got a big couch, like a corner sofa in my shop upstairs. It's like literally being in your living room upstairs at my shop. Yeah. Big telly, watch film, chilled out. There's none of this, you know. It's no no bravado there or anything. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, because they can be quite they can be quite like not scary places. Scary is the wrong word. Intimidating is the right some, word. Yeah, some some can like yeah they you, they can to be fair. You know when you see like the um, I've, I haven't got any tattoos, but there was uh, a place in uh, Sheffield and it had like grills over it, you know, like bars and things like that. And yeah, did, you know, <laughs> just think no, I ain't going how, in. How there. how big do you think the one that the um, yeah, the the what the reason sorry the wanting to succeed is down to kind of others not wanting you to fail but being scared of what they think. Only the only reason I asked was I remember being seventeen and I failed a, one of the bits in Royal Marine training. Yeah, and I was fucking ringing home like fucking half crying to my dad. Yeah, that I'd failed. And the big thing it never ever came into my head about wanting to quit because I was thinking fucking my dad's told half of Liverpool that I'm, I'm already in the Marines <laughs> and I'm not. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, I am not going back home. No. And people to think, oh, you're in the Marines now when we have to go, now I fucking quit. Yeah, so that's what I mean. That's, that's where it could, you've got it the same. Like, it's drive, isn't it? Like, you, it is a fear. It's a fear. Fear, really. yeah. It is a fear of of people looking at you and thinking, oh, you said you are going to do that, but you didn't. You finish yeah. it. Mm. Even though you're not really bothered what people think, but it gives you that little bit of a, fuck you, I'll, I'll show you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that, that's what I've just found got me through most of the stuff that I wanted to do. Even when I thought, I can't be honest today. I think, get yeah, just do it. Yeah. That's what about it. what about now with like now you've back when you were twenty one you really had nothing to lose. Whereas mm. now, yeah, obviously there's there's so much more to lose than yeah. when you were twenty one. Do you ever worry about that or think? Do, do you know what I just good question that? Yeah, yeah, it is a good question. I I I think so. So it's a bit of a long thing, really. I think once you, going from just the normal everyday tattooist to then being rocketed onto the telly and people knowing who you are. You can you can be sucked into you've got to be very careful because you can be sucked into the, the whole you know, if if you go suddenly to five hundred thousand followers and then you look at you if you start getting involved and you start worrying about things like likes and follows and comments and all that shit, yeah. You'll get sucked into a fucking dark hole. Like mm. so I don't I don't let myself do that. I don't care about it. I just think fuck it, who cares? It is what it is. You know, I know a lot of people that, you know, they can, they live for their followers and stuff like that. And, you know, if you get into a lifestyle of worrying about all that shit that you've got, you forget everything you did beforehand mm. and you just, you become obsessed with it. And then suddenly you forget about all the things that actually matter and you focus on this one thing that's just not that important in mm. the bigger scheme of things at all. I think it's about focusing on what's important. You know, I'm, I've, I've worked myself into a comfortable position now where, you know, I love my life. Do you know what I mean? I, I've got a nice life, a nice, happy life. I'm not, not, not like bragging. It's not like bragging, yeah, but yeah. I, I'm just, I've worked myself into a comfortable position. I'm a family man first and foremost before anything else. Like I love my family. I spend, I choose to spend time with my family of anything else. So that's what's important to me. And I just don't forget that. So mm. the, like the followers and stuff and all that stuff, it comes secondary and it doesn't really bother me now. Mm. In, in the beginning, you start thinking shit and you're getting talked to a bit like you know oh like there's pressure do you know what i mean you've got to act mm. a certain way because now people follow you and people are sort of looking up to you because you get you get a message you find that you get messages off kids who are watching the show and stuff like that like i'd walk down the street tattoo fixes is, i mean we used to swear that you know you'd, there'd be cocks on show like ta <laughs> you know yeah. tattoos are cocks and stuff and you're thinking fucking hell but then I'd walk down the street and people would come to me and go, oh my God, my daughter loves you. And the daughter's like eight. And you're like, How do you even know who I am? How are you even watching it? Do you know what I mean? So it, it's freaky like, so, but again, you just got to, it's just, it's just about just for remembering where you come from and what you're about. Mm. That's it. That's all I think about. Do you ever think about like, there's two, you kind of have two different careers, like the, the, the shop yeah. and then the TV sort of like. Yeah. Put, like, yeah, it is. It is. Even though, I do what I do at the shop on telly, so they sort of come hand in hand. Yeah, they are separate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's, I, I suppose I find it weird to to also. I find it weird. I forget about the TV stuff when I'm in my shop because I've always been there. And it's only when customers come in and they're a bit, oh my god, you know, you think, yeah. 
Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> that's that's this, mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's mad. Just, yeah, it's crazy. Like, but you get your head around it. You get your head around so, it. So you know when you started filming for Tattoo Fixes, obviously there must have been a period of what six months a year. I think you said before yeah, it went yeah. live. So is it kind of this? Was you was you born about this to say kind of you know? Uh, no, I don't remember being like because I think you don't really know. It wasn't it wasn't a show like that's established. It'd never been a show. So with all shows, it's whether or not it's gonna take off do you know what I mean whether people are going to latch onto it or not and oh, so mate, not really so fucking big though wasn't it yeah it just went just went massive so we no we weren't prepared for that at all like we, we prepared maybe that one or two people might know who you were from like when you walk in the street but for, you know no weren't prepared for what happened after my motivational talks without doubt I mean you get some really deep meaningful questions about you know how did you come through this and adversity and any hints and tips yeah always get would you want tattoo fixes? Do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. That is mad, isn't it? Honestly. That is crazy. All the stuff you do. Yeah. And that's what people that's know, it. isn't it? Honestly, yeah. I haven't seen that episode. I'll have to find it. It'll be online, won't it? I'll be able to find yeah, it yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah. The first ever episode. Yeah, I think it was the first ever episode, but it got good. You got a massive reaction. Yeah, it was. It's because it's a kind of funny story, isn't it, as well? And um... It's got both, though, hasn't it? Yeah, it's motivational mm. and and humorous as well. Mm. So it proper, you know, that's what really grabs people because you're pulling on every emotional heartstring they've got, really. Haven't you? Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the big thing. What I like doing about the speaking is that I don't feel like it's a um, I kind of feel sorry for me thing, and I'm just speaking solely about getting blown up. The whole point is, you know, that's a small part of it. Yeah. It's actually look what I've been able to achieve since. So it, yeah, it's you massive. kind of get that thing of people feeling sorry for yourself, and then yeah. all, you're almost spinning it right on its head. Where, People are almost not jealous, but they're like, "Wow, fucking fair play!" Like yeah. I couldn't do that. Type I saw thing, a thing it? that you'd said um, when you were on LFC TV. You know that you don't, you don't regret it. You don't regret joining the Marines and no. stuff because you know what you've done well before it happened and stuff, and then after since. You know, whereas again, that's that's a mindset in it. That's a mm. positive mindset. Whereas I suppose you know, there's be a lot of people that maybe would look at it from a negative angle and be like, "Oh yeah, I wish that never happened." But you mm. know, and I'm sure obviously you wish it never happened, but. You know, you you're able to be there and look at the stuff that you've done because of that. That wouldn't have happened. Made met well, maybe it's like your mindset, don't It's like fuck it, man. I'm just gonna, it's down to me now, and yeah, you just you just got to crack on, haven't you? No, it's quality, mate. It's really good. Is that a book? Uh, have you read that book? Um, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. No, no, I've heard about it by Mark Manson. Yeah, it's quality. Have you read it's, it? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. He's he's just released a new one, which is um, what's it called? Everything um, everything is fucked. I think I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it's a cracking book. Yeah, really good. But sometimes it's just hard to uh, if you actually ultimately don't give a fuck about anything, yeah. then <laughs> then it is quite hard to uh, you know get through life. But it's, it's, it is a cracking book, really good book. Yeah. Just it just reminded me when when you were mentioning then about fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, um, I think you just got to be. Care- I think it's just you have to judge everything that comes into your life, every circumstance, and think what you're gonna give a shit enough about and what you're not yeah. you're going to put to bed that's it yeah mm-hmm. because there's some things obviously you can't just not give a fuck about. <laughs> yeah. but there's other things that you just think oh it's wasting my time yeah just box yeah. it off and move on yeah that's it. it's hard though it's it's really hard to only give it only give a fuck about the thing because all the time like even when i don't know if it does affect you but i imagine even if you're reading a comment mm. and someone's put oh i don't know that photo shit mm. you really have to be an eye an iron sort of minded person yeah. to not uh, to not let that even have a tiny inch of oh, a, impact you know on you. I think that anyone would read a negative comment about themselves and it would make them feel something. You, you'd be mm. as cold as ice to not have any emotion towards something. But I think it's again, it comes down to whether you give a fuck about it or not. Because these these trolls and stuff, they just. I mean, some of the stuff. I mean, I see stuff that they write to other people on social. I mean, to be fair, I don't get that much of it. But I've had some stuff in the past, like bad shit. <laughs> but, you know, I see people who get some really harsh stuff said about about the way they look or the, what they're wearing and stuff. And you're thinking, what the fuck are you on to be even mm. thinking? Like, you know, you do, do start thinking about what is that person yeah. going through in their life to even think about writing that? Mm, you know, you, you have some, some some heavy shit going on in your life to even want to be like that sort of person, aren't you? Mm. So you, you just yeah. think, fuck them. And oh. you know what? I don't mess around with them. I just block them and delete them. And anything that comes negative, I just think, get rid. I'm not messing about with that. See you later. All you're going to do is just try and put negativity mm. on my account. And I don't need, I don't want to see it. I don't no. care about it. See you later. Yeah. Block them, delete them. What's get that pressure like then, though, that you're dealing with that kind of anyway type thing, but then knowing what you're doing is going to be live, well, not live on TV, but 
you know, that pressure of yeah. this is going to be on TV, it might look shit. That's it. You know, you just get to a point where, you, again, that's where I'm able to just go, fuck it. Did you ever I'll think about that before the TV when the opportunity came along? Was there a bit of that mm. thought? Hang on. You know, yeah, there's so many positives with building the profile and the brand and the business, but actually, if I'm always you just so self confident and thinking, you know what, I'm I'm good at this and I want to just show. I off. was more self confident than I had those those thoughts. I'm not going to lie, like you know, you of course you're going to go out there and put yourself out there and into the public eye, and people are going to obviously have an opinion. But I was more self confident about my work and what I can do and what I'm no. I think it's about knowing yourself as well. Like mm. I I know what I'm capable of in tattooing. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what people say to me, but I'm very conscious, obviously, that, you know, you're putting your work out there on TV. And again, it's the same thing as when I open my shop, people will talk and be like, he's good or he's shit. Mm. You know, it's, it's black or white, really. Yeah, yeah. So I'm aware of it, but I think if you're going to, you have to weigh up the pros and cons and think, if I'm going to do this, fuck it. Mm. Again, just <laughs> get on with it. Put yourself out there. Don't worry about it. it what will be, will be. And that's the way it's going to be, and that's how it worked. Mm. I, th- I think that it's like that old saying, you know, uh, <clears throat> building a brick wall is easy if you know how to. And I think it's like people say to me, "Do you ever get nervous speaking on stage yeah. to like a thousand people?" And I'm a bit like you. That mindset is no, because I, I know I'm good at what I do. Yeah, that's it. So whether it's five people or five thousand people, yeah, I think the biggest crowd I spoke to was was twenty thousand people at Remembrance Day. It's insane. And it's like, was I? And I genuinely was not nervous. No, like at not, all. No, swear to God. Not that, that that that's it though, isn't it? It comes down yeah. to you know you know yourself, you know what you're talking about, you've lived it, mm. you you're confident in what you're saying, you can back up what you're saying. Mm. What's there to be worried about? If they don't like yeah. it, fuck off. Yeah, exactly. How really? have you got good at so good at public speaking? Is it just literally just practice, practice and practice? That's what was your first time public speaking? Like, were you nervous? It's, then? It's a, I love this story actually. When people normally ask me this question as well, they say, you know, how did you get into speaking? So I joined the Marines and. Like you, I went to sixth form before the Marines, so I had a really good relationship with all my old school teachers. Now, because getting into the Marines was was a pretty big thing, they asked me to come back and do a talk for the kids about joining the Marines. So it was like, I went in jeans and t-shirt, really informal chat with the kids. It was more like a Q&A than anything. Then I got back from Iraq, done the same thing. So it was a bit like, a over a couple of years, kept on going into the school, just doing little chats. Mm. Then I got injured in Afghanistan, and... Um, the school secretary rang me up one day and said, Andy, can you come and do another talk that you've done? I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. She said, can you wear your medals and your uniform this time, please? And I said, you know what? It's only like 20 kids in the classroom. I don't really need to get dressed up and all that. <laughs> she said, no, no, it's in the local town hall in front of 700 people. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hang on a minute. Like, fucking hell. <laughs> I've never done anything like this before. Yeah. So I went and spoke to my old English teacher, a guy called Peter Gall, a really nice guy. And I said, look, do you want me to now take this up a notch? And, and it coincided, it was a week before I was having my leg amputated. So it was 2010, the first one. And I kind of coined this little speech and I was talking about, you know, the kids, were, it was, an, it was a, an award ceremony for when they were leaving school. So I kind of coined it on, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. You're going into the big wild world after school. I'm about to have my leg amputated. I've got, got no idea what the future is going to hold. But, you know, be positive, surround yourself by good people and, you know, work hard and stay determined. And... It, like 20 minute speech and got a standing ovation people were crying at the end of it and shaking really? my hand and hugging me and I kind of walked off stage and thought fucking hell I enjoyed that yeah and and that was it then I just I went to see a life coach and put some things together and then and over the years it's just changing all the time yeah and yeah just getting better and better at it that's but, really good mm, that's quality yeah but again it was that kind of just love of doing it yeah and you're just thinking and then now it gets to a point when fucking hell I've, I've spoke all over the world now doing it big crowds and because you've got that confidence now and you enjoy it, it's like, I fucking love it. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking, it's amazing. Plus you, like, the buzz you must get off people, like, because when you tell your story and you speak about the stuff you speak about, all those people in that crowd must be just be like, locked on, listening. That feeling must be buzzing, like, yeah. you must buzz mm, off that. Yeah. And then suddenly everyone's, because they, they do, they're so drawn into it and then you can see that they're so into it and then at the end of it, you get a standing ovation. Like, that is Yeah, yeah it's amazing. It? And because you've took them on a roller coaster of emotions, you know, people are almost close to tears and they're laughing out loud and then they're on the yeah. edge of the seat. And But the best bit about it, it, it happened just last week. I'd done a talk down in, um, in Wolverhampton and a guy came up to me at the end and he shook my hand and he just said, thanks a lot, Andy. Uh, I've got some stuff going on and I really needed that right now. 
and he was a bit teary and he just shook my hand and you know the way someone sometimes someone shakes your hand and they yeah. maybe hold on for a second longer or something and, and he looked at me a certain way and it had a massive impact on me because you just thought you know you don't know what people have got going on in nah. their own lives and the impact that you're having on them and so yeah me i the way you love your job and i i'm, I'm like that's mad, the same because yeah. it's you you, you get so I'm much for, out of it I'm don't for, you? yeah i'm so fortunate it's like i've got the best job in the world you're getting feedback and you're having a positive impact on people that's it you do. I do feel I think really when you lucky. see that effect that you're having on people, it makes everything just like worthwhile. Mm. It's incredible. Because I mean, the thing I always say is, you know, you don't need to get blown up in Afghanistan to realise life can be shit. Yeah. Like fucking life is hard. Yeah. <laughs> whether you're struggling financially month to month, whether it's yeah. relationship breakdown, single parents working fucking every hour God sends, life can be a fucking struggle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't yeah. need to have one leg to, to fucking realise that. No. And I think people can get perspective when they listen to the story and yeah. they can say, you know what. He's got. He's gone through that. I fucking, I can get through this as well. Yeah. So it's good, mate. Yeah. No, I'm that's really quality. Lucky. It's really good. Yeah. I feel um, sort of a little small in the corner here. We might. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you... Tom always down, down plays his job, mate. You, you <clears throat> fucking enjoy your job, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, do. Yeah, yeah. No, it's quality. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Three, four, uh, four years. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. So um, no, it's look. I go all over the world with it and stuff like that. Um, so we move laboratories. They've very kindly sort of made me commercial director now. So oh, right. yeah, so So how long you say you've been it? Three, four years? Four years, yeah. 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 Did you enjoy it? Yeah. It's good. Well that's it, isn't it? I that's know. all it is, isn't it? That is literally the, the like the main thing. You know what it was so funny the other day? Had uh, woke up um took me little girl to school, went to the gym, and then it was a really sunny day. Went back, had some lunch, got my dog and I walked the park, right? And I took a book with me to the park. I felt like such an old man, but I fucking loved this day. And I'm walking the dog and I sat on a park bench reading a book. The dog's like walking around and I just felt so content. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It was just, and that feeling that you get when you're doing something you enjoy. Yeah. I had like a talk lined up the next day, a dummy prep for it. And I think, you know, sometimes in life, materialistic things and you can worry about shit. Yeah. Fucking hell, mate, the key to life is just enjoying living in the moment that's it being mm. content I'm, yeah. fucking, I'm certain of it yeah. <laughs> that, that is, is fucking life it is living in the moment is key you, everyone forgets that you, most people don't though do you, you see it all the time you, you either live in you're living in the past or you're living in what you want for the future you, ne- you very rarely oh, yeah, yeah. You forget that you're in the moment and then things just pass by or someone it takes someone passing away and you think fuck yeah. you know, how many times you go like you go to a funeral and everyone goes oh we need to we need to see we need, yeah more. we need to yeah, get yeah. more why is it took a funeral for us to think yeah. that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. When people used to ask me what I miss most about the Marines and like the regrets that I've got, like the stupid regrets, like I wish that I didn't spend more time like enjoying, like being around the lads and just, yeah. you know, enjoying the moments rather than, you know, just other things. You wish you just enjoyed those moments more. Yeah, you do. Mm. There's a really good thing. I'm going to try and find it. In There was a, a picture and it was a human life in dots and yeah. it makes you realise how fucking short your life is. Yeah. And the amount of... Because I thought to myself, right, how many times do I see my grandma? And it was like, you can work out and I like, you know, your average human lives to 82. Yeah. See maybe once or twice a year and you think, fuck. Like, yeah. I've only... <laughs> do you know what I mean? When it, yeah. when it, it say it, like nine more times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it was mad, yeah. I just I'll, I'll try and find it now. Yeah, you like, like I'm 30 next year. And I'm thinking, I remember my 21st like it was yesterday. Yes, mm. yeah, like, yeah. I know I know people say that, you say things like that, you sound dead old saying it, don't you? But it's true, like, I've really... I, I, funny enough, actually, mad. I thought about it, because someone said it to me a while ago, oh, you'll enjoy it, enjoy school, because it's quality. And yeah. some people obviously don't enjoy school because you get bullied in, in bits and pieces, but I fucking love school. And looking back at it, I do actually, reg- like, miss it somewhat. You know, yeah, just you I, do, literally, yeah. I had no financial worries at all. No. You, you're not worrying about money at all. You no. just you've got twenty p for I I don't know, the talk like. the talk shop, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you and you're fucking loving it. You got you're playing football with your mates. Yeah. And you remember that going? These are the best days of your life. You should appreciate them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. I can't wait to be free and or just go to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, school was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, it's quality. Really good. Hey, go, going back onto the um, on the tattoo in a second. When you first started doing the uh, tattoo fixes, yeah. Had you had much experience with people coming in with bad tattoos saying, sort this out yeah. for me? Yeah, lo- loads over the years. Like, um, But I'd, I'd never really... I didn't do a lot of cover-ups because I didn't enjoy that. I mean, any, I think most tattoos will say they'd hate doing cover-ups. I mean, because mm. you've not got a blank canvas, so your work can only look as good as it can with something 
dark coming through it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's difficult. Cover-ups are really difficult and to find something to manipulate an old tattoo into something that you've got. I mean, the customer has an idea of what they want. You've got, you know what's going to work. And so it's a case of trying to make their idea come with your idea and make that work over that. And it's, it may, sometimes it's a no go and sometimes it's a, this can work, but you're going to have to adapt here a little bit and you know, you're going to have to have it, give me a little bit of freedom here. Yeah. You know, so it is difficult. So before then, not, I, I'd done some cover ups and stuff like that. So I'd done, I had a little bit of experience in them, but no, nothing like, I mean, I, I learned a lot about cover ups on Tattoo Fix as well. Plus, plus from working with, you know, the other artists on there as well, we'd help each other. Mm. You know, we'd talk to each other and be like, oh, this and then bang on, perfect. Mm. You know, so we, we did, you know, but it was good, you know, it's good experience and stuff. So I've got, I've got it up here now. It just makes you think, actually, how how small you're. <laughs> when you look at it like that, just how many dots there are. There's fuck all dots, <laughs> <laughs> and how quickly a year goes. <laughs> yeah, and they've crazy. done it in months as well, which I think months even... looks better. <laughs> I like months. I don't know. That looks scary to me. You know, I think. Yeah, you just don't realise, do you? You know what's scary for me? A bit morbid, but um, like my mum died when she was thirty six, oh, and, really? and I'm thirty one next month, and I think like. Fuck me, my mum died in five years' time. Like, and I think, you know, I'm not fucking hell, I don't want to die. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, I think that's scary when you think of so if you've lost someone at what age they were. Yeah. Like, fucking, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, How old did you say? I'm 31 next month. 31, yeah. yeah. That's it in weeks, actually. That does look quite a long. Yeah. Nah, that's why I'm a big bully. And I know it's hard sometimes to say, oh, just do what you love and it, it, people can go, oh, well, it's not as easy as that. And I, I do understand that. But yeah. that's why. I, I do, mate. I love like following you on on social media, and I love yeah. surrounding myself by people who have got that attitude. Where yeah. you're like, "Fucking hell, it's it's down to us." Like we've got to try and make, you know, it's not a dress rehearsal. It's no. life. You know, you've got to fucking enjoy it and do things that make you happy. And you know, I think for my my own opinion is it trying to have that attitude with someone who doesn't buy into it. You can come across as quite like, "Oh, it's fucking easy for you to say, or oh, you can't." Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that you'll always get the people that say. Oh, it's all right for you. You've done this, or you've got that, or you. Yeah, everyone can say that. But if if people like us didn't didn't speak out loud and say what we've done and stuff like that and how we've done it, then everyone would just live like that and just be like, "Oh, life's hard," and you yeah, can't. Yeah. You know, no one would look at things positively. Everything would just mm. be negative. Mm. So you know, you're always going to get negative people who say stuff about the positive things you're doing. Yeah, it's just that's just people, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I, I try and say like, you know, every morning I could get up and I could. Every morning I've got to get up and put a fucking leg on. It's not ideal. No. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It is a bit of a ball, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But you know what? Once it's done, it's fucking done then. That, yeah. that day is then mine to do what I want to do with it and I try and be positive with it. So yeah, no, mate, that's why I love chatting to mate, about these kind of stories. That's like. just, that's the thing. You, you've got to do that every morning. You just, the way you look at it is just, even like I'm like, fucking hell, you know, I've got it easy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You do. Mate, one thing I wanted to ask ask you was, um, I just remember when I was younger, there was a span of people that decided, I don't know if it still happens or not, yeah. but there was a few people that decided to get um, companies sponsored their tattoos on their head. Do you remember this or not? No, it doesn't Sponsored remember. their tattoos on yeah, their head? Yeah, so like eBay would pay me to have eBay written on my forehead. Tattooed. Bald. Bullshit. Tattooed. Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. Honestly. Actually tattooed. Yeah. Actually tattooed, yeah. I like don't a, believe you. I kid you not. I don't believe you. Honestly. That would surely not be allowed. The like, company would get sued or something. That is... M- I'm sure it was during be. the dot-com... I'm, 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 to be honest, nothing would, you know, blow was, my mind, really, but... It was during the dot-com... Um, oh... Can't find it on Google. No, wait, 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 wait. Bullshit, Tom. <laughs> I'm sure it was Hostgate. There's been more crazier stuff than like so. Yeah, there it is. Is, is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What see. the fuck? People are actually, yeah, people are actually doing it. <clears throat> but they, they, but they, I think they were companies paying them or are they just doing think, it and then going, oh, look, I've, I'm advertising you eBay. Can you give me some free stuff? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That looks like a porn website, doesn't it? XXXHoneyVideo.com <laughs> <laughs> Nah, like what? That's That's got to be wrong. That, that's surely preying on people who are a bit maybe not mentally stable yeah, to look, get that when dot com, there, Yeah, when dot-com companies were flushed with it. So back in um, early 2000 when the dot-com bubble happened and all the big tech companies went under, invested in their fair share of flesh, HostGator.com is pictured. You're not done any cover-ups of these, Jay? No. <laughs> yeah, no, no. 
Do you know what though? It's it's the same. Like you, you get some stuff and you think you say no to stuff. Uh, really? Yeah, I've said no to loads of stuff. Just nah. Like you know, you think you you can't be in the right frame of mind to want that. Like you know. Yeah. So, some people like, you're like, a bit concerned, aren't you? Like yeah. <laughs> like what? Well, come on, I, <laughs> oh, I don't even know. I could say these things. Some of these things. Oh, can I say this? Can I say this? Well, I can say this one, but like, you know, there's been people come in in the last four offensive tattoos. No go straight away. You're just like, no, but you can't even believe that some of them are even asking for him. You're just like, really? Eh? Fucking serious, mate. <laughs> yeah, no way. You can't have that. You can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> or you, you can, but I'm not doing it. Yeah. You know yeah, what, I mean? yeah, yeah. what like, like racist things or like, yes. Like, so I had a guy come in and said he wanted a swast sticker. I was knew I was like, you no, were going to say that. No really? way, mate. Yeah. Well, and, I, and I, did, I want it on my chest. No one will see it. And I won't tell anyone you've done it. No. I don't care if you won't tell. I'm not not doing it, mate. Like, <laughs> and did he look when he come in like kind of far right of the type thing? No, or? some of these people you would not believe the stuff they want, and they just look like normal people. And you just think you don't even look mental, like, <laughs> and you, you want something as crazy as that. It's insane. That is fucked up. Yeah, you know, it? there's loads of stuff that's happened like over the years. From from tattoo fix, did anyone? What what was your your like you? Let's go. What was the kind of cover up where you thought, "What the fuck have this, have these done?" Fuck. Do you know what? I look at a lot of them. I just think, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't even know what to say half the time. I'm just, I, I'm normally there, just like speechless. Like I don't even know. What to, like I just look at them. I think, at what point was that ever even funny? Like mm. you know, some people, some people they go to they go on these holidays to Magaluf. They go and like. Yeah, three four, in the morning, yeah, yeah. Go into these tattoo shops and they're like, I mean, I would never have done that. No, un- under any amount of alcohol, I would never go into a tattoo shop and get a tattoo at that time of the morning on holiday, ever. Never mind come out with a fucking big dick down my leg. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or but did you see that girl a few years ago? She had the Harry Potter scar tattooed on her forehead. No. Oh my God. I was just looking at her thinking, wow. Well, have you yeah, done- type, type in some tattoo fixes, like, Best best ones or something. Yeah, there'll be some crackers here. Now nah, we we played a funny game. Where I was I was in Germany. Yeah, uh, loads of Marines, and we uh, it was just before I was having my leg amputated, and we played the game of spoof. So the game of spoof is a game that we play in the Marines. You, you hold three coins. There's a big circle of you all. Uh, you have the coins in your hands, and then you have to pick. So for example, there'll be potentially nine coins. So I'd say six. Tom would say three, and you'd say eight. And if you guessed the right amount of coins in total, you have to stand to attention, keep a straight face and say, thank you, gentlemen spoofers, for I do believe that is me. And then you're out the game and it goes down till, so you can start with 20 people. Yeah. You know I mean, there's like potentially 60 coins and it gets whittled down to two. Anyway, <laughs> the forfeit of this was you had to get a tattoo. And I thought, if I fucking lose this, I'm just going to get the tattoo on my foot that I'm getting amputated. Because <laughs> it'll, it'll only be there for a few fucking months and it'll be gone. So um, anyway, the lad was um, who got the tattoo was like, oh, I can't, can't. So we gave him another forfeit to do in the end, which was fucking horrible. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had to drink a pint of piss, which was disgusting. oh mate, that's, that's, that's what he had to do. Drink piss. It was um, not his own piss. Uh, it was it his own? Probably. I think it was his own piss. I think it might have been two pints of piss actually. It was either get a lawnmower tattooed on his on somewhere on him, <laughs> or drink two pints of piss. <laughs> Oh. So he drank two pints of piss. Like, I, I, to be honest, I probably would have got the tattoo. Yeah, I would have had to, I, I would yeah. drink two pints yeah. of piss. Fuck that. No way. Oh, oh. Let's see some of these tattoos then. Oh. Tattoo fixes best ones. Is that what you oh. type in? Yeah. Yes. Oh, who's that one with the dick on his leg? Oh, I don't know. But it's like a little, little fat dick as well. Isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. If you're going to get a dick, get a proper dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my oh, god Jesus. god is that Deidre on one yeah Go up a sec, that Tom. was on um, that, that lad um, Martin he up again he up was again. killed in the Manchester Arena attack what oh. the one who had Deidre tattooed yeah. yeah he was killed yeah I, I tattooed that Deidre on him um, fucking hell massive Deidre well found a lovely lad he was and then yeah when that Manchester Arena happened he was killed in the attack yeah. fucking hell yeah so, and then I think on the last series, I, I'm obviously not in the latest series of tattoo fixes, but I think on the latest ones, his family members, someone came on and then had a portrait of him dressed as DJ Barlow. Really? Yeah, tattooed on him, yeah. Fucking as like a tribute. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah, so couldn't believe it. It was shocking, man. Couldn't believe that. But it, it, even that, I mean, 
oh look are you there on the beach <laughs> <laughs> um, but when he come in that lad and he said I want Deirdre Bartley what, what do you think when he said that <laughs> I, I, he was just obsessed with Deirdre Bartley so I was just like what can I say yeah. I mean, I, I've got Mike Tyson tattooed on me Muhammad Ali people like you know she's, she's just a fan isn't yeah. he you know people probably think I'm a weird little fucker as well <laughs> <laughs> mate you're so did that come back to your days when you were saying then you used to draw rappers and stuff because yeah. some of the mate you've got one on your Instagram if people haven't um, go on your Instagram and have a look mate you've drawn two packets at the size of a pound or something oh that was a tattoo yeah fuck me yeah. mate like size of a penny it was on his wrist mate yeah watch this on um, typing that on like two pack J something was it a while ago when you were yeah, well, was it? yeah yeah probably best looking for a while or something oh mate <clears throat> what, how the what? fuck do you draw that small do you know what you've got to be careful as well with some tattoos because if you do them too small over years ink can spread so you, you can't go under a certain size as well with certain things because you know eventually it'd probably be cross-eyed do you know what I mean yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what we're typing in here that's why so it was um, Tupac. Tupac. It was a standard size that you know it would it would hold. To be fair, and it, it's held really well. So there it is. Uh, this one. No, keep going. Next one. Next one. That one. Uh, no, next one. That one. You can see it uh, there. But look at that penny next to it, and see that's that the actual picture there. above it. Fucking oh. hell! Look at that. That's just we thought that was his last ever photo. That wasn't it? Yeah. yeah Me, I like the ago. detail in that. Fuck me. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah, he was a big two pack fan. As you can tell, that's a whole sleeve. <laughs> Fuck, five or six portraits of him on it. That's good. Though. And how long did that take? They, they, they sleeves all vary. To be honest, depends on the detail and what's in them. But I mean, you, I'd say you're averaging at least forty hours. Forty maybe. hours. Yeah. I can Like a week's work. Yeah. I mean, do you have? Do you ever have anyone? And the they just fucking weak. Like a doc comes on, they're like, "Oh, I can't do it." Oh yeah, yeah. I've had people pass out, everything. Just, yeah. Just <laughs> what do you do? Out. What do you do if someone, you know, you do a big design for them, and after two minutes, they're like, "I can't do this." Do you know what? It deflates <laughs> you a bit because you build yourself up for it. I'm thinking, right, this is going to look well, good. Starting, and then they think, no, can't do this, and you're like, it very rarely happens, but it has happened, you know. And so I'm just like. <sighs> You know, so no I can't take that and then they took you know they can get numbing cream and stuff like that but you know it's not ideal but it helps them get through it a little bit better so that sometimes a lot of them come back and they, they go they have numbing cream and stuff but it's the ones that, that pass out mate it's <laughs> like <laughs> they pass out in the shop and I'm just like oh god what you big doing? guys I mean big guys asleep on the floor what do you do? What like? What do you do? Just take take a selfie, like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't. Can you imagine? Um, you just literally have to. Yeah, have to get, put them in a recovery position and wait for them to come around. Sometimes they they want to carry on. Like, I had a guy who was having his first tattoo, big guy, and he was just like, you know, he was over talking, which is a sign that they're nervous, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And then, um, so I started. I'd done a couple of lines on him, and and he, I could see him like. His breathing was a bit heavy, and I, thought, I was just thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, I'm sure he's not going to pass out, surely. And so I carried on, and uh, the, this is, you know, when they say, "Can I have a glass of water?" Chances are they go, they're going to go within a couple of seconds. I'm like, "Yep," yeah. so I'm straight up. So I was like, "You feel all right?" Yeah, I'm just, just, uh, just tired, mate. <laughs> just give us a minute. It's just been a long drive, you know. And then by the time as I, as I got up to the thing, got the water, he was like, <laughs> like this, and he was going and. My brother was tattooing on the other side of the room, ran over, like we were literally holding him up. He was heavy, mate, and he was just like <laughs> Jesus. Gone. Like out cold. And I was like shaking him. I was like I was like, You right, mate? You right? And he was just like this going. <laughs> and then they come round and then half the time they don't know where the fuck they are for a couple of seconds and then they're just like and I'm like, if you just do I pass out and then they're embarrassed, aren't they? <laughs> so then they they just trying to be like, Oh yeah, sorry, I just that's not normal for me. Like, I don't know, it's not the pain, it's not pain, I'm just tired, you know? And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> You're shy. Oh, no, mate. Oh. <laughs> but that's yeah, it's happened a few times, mate. People passed out. That's cool. Uh, people tap out as well, a lot. Yeah, I've had a lot of people tap out. Yeah, it's mad. Mate, let me get on because mate. So I only put this up a couple of hours ago on Instagram and the amount of people had, had questions for you. A lot of them were like tattoo-related questions, yeah. which are cool. Cool. Um, 
Let's see, here we go, right. That means nip to Lou while you grab it up. <clears throat> Yeah, we've got loads of questions. Yeah. So <clears throat> you must get, like we said before, social media, mate. You must get some strange requests. So we'll ask it about them in a minute, but <laughs> some of the questions we got here. Yeah. Um what did he think of my realism? Hang on, is he People are fucking crazy, don't even understand what that means. <laughs> what did he think of my realism, Phil Taylor portrait drawing? Is there a picture of it? I can't no, I don't even think there is a picture of it. So uh. I don't know how the <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's probably not seeing it. Um, do you use grey inks or grey shade washes for portraits? World famous ink I use grey wash. World famous grey wash ink. Yeah, it's quality. It's the best ink I've ever used. Yeah, that was from um, Wesley Wade tattoo. So they must be into the tattoos. Yeah. Someone's asked. This is I said to you before we start recording. Someone says, "When will you have a baby?" When we'll have a baby. <laughs> I don't think you will ever be able to have one, to be fair. I mean, and someone else has asked, do you want children? Yeah, yeah, I definitely want children. But, like, we're in a position now where we, we could easily, we could have kids now, but we both decided, you know, we want to do the stuff we want to do. You know, we're in a position where we can we can wait and, and stuff, so the stuff we want to do together, you know, spend as much time together. Because it's funny enough, actually, a few weeks ago, I was, I was talking to Mon, and I was like, you know, one day, because we both want kids and stuff, so, and I was like, you know, we need to make the most of our time together because one day we won't even remember what it felt like to just be on our own. Mm. You know, when you've got teenagers and stuff running around. So we're just like, it's like living for the moment and it, you know, we're just enjoying at the moment. We got married last year. So we're just enjoying our time as enjoying our time as a married couple at the minute. So yeah, we definitely will have kids, but probably not for a couple of years. One of Jay's super fans asked if, well, two, two fans asked if they wanted kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where did you get married? Uh, last April. Where, whereabouts? Uh, so a place called Sorton Hall. Sorton Hall. Yeah. Well, I got married in a church in in North Wales, and then and then, the br- and and then went breakfast. To yeah, 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 yeah. It was, yeah. It was a great day. Perfect. You'll get married, aren't you? I know. Yeah. What? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. You nervous? A little bit. Yeah. It's quality, mate. I'm just. I, did you get too? Did you sort of stem the drinking throughout the whole day, or did yeah. you? Yeah. Because you're. Well, wanna... I got up in the morning and I, I had a shot with my brother. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, mate, it, it was just, it, it pissed down all week. And I was thinking, oh, it's going to rain. And then the, on the morning I woke up, beautiful. Couldn't have asked for better weather. I can, oh, In yeah. April as well it was, yeah. So it was like, it was like July weather. So it was it was boiling. It was beautiful, yeah. And, and I was, I, if I drink all day, I tend not to get pissed. By the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not one of these people. I don't end up hungover the next day. And I just pace my drinking through the yeah. day. But I'm just at a nice, you know tipsy mm, all yeah. day and it's just bang were you on. nervous at the start when when do you know what the, i weren't nervous i wasn't nervous at all because i don't know i was just like i've, I've been excited for it for so long and and i think you know i was more excited that one we were getting married and two you know all the people that you care about in the world are there yeah you, you know you don't get many opportunities to have all those people that you care about in one room for a whole day and have a party and enjoy yeah. yourself yeah, so I was, yeah. Just, I was excited more than anything yeah um obviously like when you, you, you know, everyone's focusing on you, you I mean you'd be fine. <laughs> but when everyone's like focused on you, you're speaking and stuff like that. It's yeah. just a little bit. But just the first that, dance. That, I'm fucking right. worried about oh. first dance. Yeah. yeah You've been practicing? No. I, I just, you know, Monica was saying to me, "We need to practice our first dance." I was like, "You don't practice your first dance. You just dance, don't you?" <laughs> and she was like, "No, we need to practice." We didn't practice anyway. <laughs> she still gives it me about it all these days. I was just. Like, well, I say I wasn't pissed, but I probably was a bit pissed. Yeah. I was just like, she goes, all you do is just kept kissing me. <laughs> <laughs> what was what was the song? Uh, it's a song uh, by a guy called Hunter Hayes. We like country music, so a guy called Hunter Hayes called uh, Wanted. It's a good song. What's your mm-hmm. song going to be, Tom? Um, fucking oh. forgot it. No, oh, you should know that. <laughs> no, wait, no, could on, no, no, edit this no, no, because we've had about five separate discussions about certain ones. Yeah. Anyway, she doesn't watch this, so it's fine. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell, I could get in trouble here. <laughs> Jesus. He's going all red. Yeah, mate, next, out, question, yeah. next question. No, no, I do know it. I just fucking, I'm under, I can't think of the damn, damn song name. But all right. <laughs> Fuck. For anyone who's not watching this on YouTube, Tom's frantically looking on his phone and trying to find out what it is. <laughs> right, someone's That's asked, um, do you still watch Tattoo Fixes even though you're not on it anymore? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't watch every episode, obviously, but I've watched it since I've not been on. I've, I've still, like I said, when I left, I always said I'd support the show. 
Because, mm. you know, it's been well, a why, why did you leave? That's probably good. Just, I just, you know, it got to a point. I've been on, I've done six seasons on it. I was living in London. I enjoyed, I loved it. It was great. But I just got to a point where I was just like, you know, I think you just know when you t- when your time's up. Like I've just thought I've had I've had enough. I'd had enough of it by then. Um, you know, I, as as an artist as well, I was always away from my shop and I was always doing cover ups. So I'm best at realism and portraits. So I wanted to go back to my shop as well and focus on that and get and just take my tattoo into the next level as well. Yeah. So. You know, I tried. I just decided to take it, step back from it, and just. Mate, that one, that Piggy Blinders one that I saw, yeah, which was, you just put that was today. Yeah, it's today. Yeah, that was amazing. Quality, that. Yeah, it's a good start. Yeah, it's unreal, aren't we? Yeah, it's good. He's gonna he's gonna get a few more like scenery behind it from the scenes from the show. Yeah, and that, and yeah, it, so yeah. that'll be good. Yeah, stuff like that. I just love doing that. It That's what it's about for me. This lad's asked, "What's the worst tattoo he's had to fix?" The worst tattoo I've had to fix. <laughs> So I get asked this question a lot, and every time I think about it, my mind goes blank. But they're so, I think, to be honest, I think they're all they're all as bad in terms of quality and ink and stuff like. That. They're all as bad as each other. But you know, I think it's the stories and why people have them more so. And, and, and especially when you see like you know girls, especially who've, who've maybe had something massive, horrible on their leg. I'll tell you, I will tell you in a minute. Actually, I didn't cover it, but it was one of the <clears> one <throat> of the worst ones. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. God. Um, but yeah, when girls have them and stuff, I always feel bad, you know, when they, they've got them on that, they've had them on their legs and stuff and they can't wear dresses and stuff anymore. And it really mm. does affect their like self-esteem stuff. So that's good. But I remember this, this one girl and, uh, she'd had a, she had a tampon hanging out oh. here. Oh, a tattoo of a tampon, not an actual tampon hanging out, but a tattoo of a tampon with like ants all over. Did you ever see it? Oh, no. see it? Ants all over it and something, I, I wasn't sure it was her or a friend. I think she said it was a friend, but a friend had, was, had a one night stand or something or slept with some lad but was was on and had a tampon in oh my pulled God. the tampon out and flung it on the floor and when she woke up the next morning there was ants all over it oh. and then I had a tattoo of that to represent that <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you know, but had it there as well like like well close and that but you just think what that's what? one of those stories you, you, don't, you don't have to get a tattoo to remember that story you could no. just I oh, remember that yeah, yeah I remember that yeah <laughs> these stories are just mad aren't they like I just think you're speechless you just and things like that you know that's what our reaction was all day every day like once one thing shocked you you think you can't get any worse and then something else comes in bang Jesus mate if um, if you could tattoo any portrait what would it be any portrait to be honest any portrait I I just love doing portraits there's not anyone in particular I'd like to tattoo but you know I always it's more for when when you do portraits it's more about the quality of the picture of the person you're tattooing because you can get some belting belter photos and uh, that's what it's about because it's hard to explain but technically it's all technical so if the photo's good quality then that's that's all it that's all it takes for me to be honest like that's a great photo of him Mm. There are some quality... I remember seeing um, something on Instagram a while ago and it was someone had... I could have sworn it was a fucking photo. Mm. That is... Yeah. You know, when you look at it, that's a photo. Yeah. And then, but someone's actually yeah. drawn it and you think, Jesus Did Christ. Did you see... If you go on my Instagram, there's a, there's a lad called Nick Brown. He's a paint, uh, oil painter. Go down. Just a couple oh. down. And he oh, painted that picture of me. That's an oil painting he's that's painted unreal, with me there. That? No, no, one down. Underneath with the glasses on. That's, that's unreal, an oil that. painting he did of me. Okay, now. Ah, Wait, how does that make insane. you feel that someone is mate it's just, is, is that much of a fan of you that they've just done an oil painting well he's, yeah he, he messaged me to say can I do it he, do, he does it with a lot of like different like people in the public eye so like he's, he's messaged me and he was like oh you know I'd like to do this painting of you and stuff like that so that's a quality mate, picture that he, he's, he's an incredible artist has that he, has he took that from artist. a photo from that you yeah I didn't even know which one which photo he was going to do but like he does loads but he just picked that one like Tim Westwood there I think he's done one of um, Charlie Sloth as well Somewhere. Yeah, Einstein. Yeah, Einstein. <laughs> That's quality. Yeah, yeah Did... he's a great artist. Very talented. I can there he is, Charlie Stop. Yeah, he's good, mate. He's really good. Mate, what's your um what's your favourite style of tattoo? To tattoo? Realism and portraits, really. Anything realistic, anything that I can copy a photograph, really. Anything. It could be scenery, it could be anything. But yeah, although I do like doing uh like family portraits. You know, like people who've passed away and stuff like that. They're the most meaningful ones, obviously. So when you do that and you 
you nail them like people when they look in the mirror it's like it's like you said when people get emotional in when you mm. speak like when, once you've spent nine hours on a tattoo they've gone through all that pain to get a picture of someone that they really care about who's passed away and they look mm. in the mirror and they get they start crying about it like that's it's, no, that's, that's nice the best feeling yeah. like you can't you can't argue with that no, it's great no. Now, what what would you ever so obviously you've just got one shop now haven't you yeah would you ever consider sort of like franchising it out or have you thought about doing that down that route or yeah I mean I'm at a point now where I've got a lot of options of things I can do from here on in with like you know there's there's stuff going on with with TV that like I'm in talks with stuff there's again like I could franchise my shop I could do there's loads of things like avenues I could go down I'm at a point now where I'm deciding certain things so that's always an option but you know it's also finding people you can trust as well is, yeah. is very difficult you know what I mean I, I mean I'm in my shop it's just me and my brother we're best mates like there's nothing that comes between us so you know when, once you add someone else into the mix I've mm. worked with with like people in the past and it hasn't worked and stuff mm. like that so it, it's I'm, I'm, I'm quite, I keep my circle dead small as well so I don't really like to <clears throat> get into it sounds weird but not not like not make new pals but you know it takes a lot for me to bring someone into the the circle yeah, type yeah. thing do you know mm. what I mean because you can't trust everyone no and plus you don't know what people are out for especially when you once you be get you know put yourself in the public eye and then people treat you differently and then you don't know what people's agendas are and stuff like that so I'm a bit paranoid I suppose but you know yeah you know it just it's just the way it works so maybe that's maybe one day I might do that but it's under your name, isn't it? And then you, you've yeah. got you know, then you've got another sort of layer of control that then yeah. you've got to you know there's another shop and yeah. like you know so that, that's it. And it, it's it's again it's about like we said about being happy, isn't it? And you know I could open a shop, I could open a shop in Glasgow, yeah. but I'll always have to go there. Yeah, I'll have to be in it, and I have to be down in this one and be like that. Then I'd be taken away from my family, I'd be taken away from my missus and stuff like that. And really, what are the things that make me happy? I like what I do. I'm, I'm comfortable. I enjoy what I do. I spend enough time with my missus. My family. If I yeah. do that, I, you know, it's what it could it could build me long term and stuff. And I, and I always think about long term stuff. But you know, you have got to live for the here and now as well, haven't mm. you? So we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, mate, you could open one in every single city, but then it just brings that ev fucking problem. Exactly. So someone didn't turn in today, and then like, who's going to look after it? And that's you know, it. So. And it all comes back on you. So it's a big. It's a big. You know, it depends. It depends what you want, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know if I want the hassle of all that. To be honest, mm. if I'm being honest, like people probably say, "Oh, you should be doing." You know, I get a lot of people go, "Oh, now you've done that, you should do this. You'd open a shop here. You'd make a killing over here in Scotland or fucking Where, Manchester yeah. or whatever." You know, and I just think, uh, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but like, I would probably wouldn't be happy. Yeah. Me, yeah, it goes back to that story, mate. I swear to God, right? <laughs> no one was as happy as me the other day. You know, <laughs> honestly, like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All the money in the damn bills here, would have struggled to be as happy as I was the other day yeah. walking my dog. Honestly, mate, you know that it's like Listen it. yeah, and yeah. you can just you can keep on striving and strap. But mate, yeah, you sounds like you got the right fucking idea. That's it. Do you know what, Mike? Because as I think as well, like my my like dream idea of a dream home was like, and it's it's very simple, but like a, just a new build, like was was my idea of like wow, made it type thing. And last year, me and my missus bought one. I mate, I absolutely love it. Like most people will be like, it's not like, you know, a three million pound house that you yeah, think yeah. is your dream home. But I mean, anyone would want that, but I'm happy with it. Do you know what I, mean? I love it. Like I love where I live. I love my state. You know, it's so quiet. Like you said, I'll take the dog for a walk and I'd look around and think, I love this. This yeah. is just mm. bliss. Like, and that you can't, you can't like throw that away for no. fucking anything. Yeah. yeah. It's the same with, like, with my house. I sort of stayed down in London for a, a few months a while ago there's i hate the place now yeah no disrespect to anyone who lives there but just there's something i think about maybe it's just me or i don't know what it is but just being out of, out of a city yeah not in the center just out of a city just just helps me so much yeah like in a weird I, way yeah i think everyone has everyone has their own thing yeah they like you know I, I like london as a city but i don't i couldn't live there mm. because it's too manic for me yeah but i like being able to go there dip in and come back yeah, out get the I hell like out. that <laughs> yeah <laughs> really the same. but I understand that there's people you know Sketches from London absolutely loves it I couldn't imagine him not living in London to be honest because he's he's very he's from South London he's proper loves yeah, the yeah, place yeah. Like, so yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine him being somewhere quiet even though he talks like oh I like it but I don't think he would live out there for long yeah. I, he'd be back straight away loves it there yeah exactly do you still speak to the guys yeah 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 I speak to him a lot yeah yeah we're all good pals we made like 
we've been through a lot together. Do you know what I mean? We all come from just the same sort of thing. Just we were just tattooists working in our local towns, and suddenly you're doing that. So when we experienced it all and lived it all together, so you know, I remember when when we when me and Sketch became super tight straight away, and uh, so when when you first come on the TV, you obviously get offered like club appearances and stuff like that, don't you? And they are fucking <laughs> mental, mate. They are <laughs> like. Anything that'll blow your mind more, that is insane. Like, and I remember we got we got offered this this club PA, and uh, they were like, "Yeah, you get paid to go there, and you get drinks and stuff." And we were like, "What? We we get paid? We get paid to have a night out?" And they were like, "Yeah." And we were like, <laughs> "Fucking hell!" And then we're like, what? And you get drinks for free? Yeah, yeah. It's like, Fucking hell! We were just like this is buzzing, yeah. So then, <laughs> so then we, but then they were like, "Oh, they'll sell tickets for people to come there and have pictures with you and stuff." And we were like. We were just like, will anyone even fucking bother coming to see me and you? So we were in the taxi there and we were like, no one's going to fucking turn up here, mate, are they? And we were just like, oh, can you imagine how embarrassing it'll be? We walk in there, it's not a fucking soul. And then um, pulled up outside this club, mate, not even a queue outside, yeah? I thought, this is going to be embarrassing. We got out, there's security guards there. We were thinking, we're not going to need you, mate. (laughs) Walked in, oh my God, mate. 200 screaming women like I can know literally we were just like mate we were like little boys like just like shy as anything they were going Jay Sketch we were just like <laughs> <laughs> mate, it was like mate I can't even explain what it was like it was just Fuckin scary hell. like scary throwing things at, like throwing like knickers and really stuff. yeah swear. like honestly it was crazy and then we just got used to that then because like it's again what becomes sort of normal to you then mm. yeah so then we did, we did loads of them together and it was just yeah it's mad like it's just it's well, nice because the, the fans do you know what I mean and, and yeah, without yeah. them we wouldn't we wouldn't be in the position we are because they love mm. the show and stuff so we love it and it's nice to actually meet people that that like are so fond of you and that and they mm. just like they just think you're great and stuff for the stuff you do on the TV and that's that's quality mm. but it is well weird to get used to at first you have to yeah. you, you have to really spin your whole mind around to like and can try and get used to it like it's yeah. normal yeah mate i remember when it was on the show was on and um this was probably my so you've just jay's just told the story of scream 200 screaming women this is my <laughs> this is my experience of it from being on tattoo fixes someone tweeted the both of us in this tweet and um was and she said something like Along the line, I can't remember the exact tweet, it was like four years ago, but it was something along the lines of Jay and Andy, uh, two good looking lads, both with beards. I wouldn't mind them two in, in the bed or something like that. You know? And I'm thinking, what the fuck? Some woman just basically wants to threesome with me and Jay because we both got beards. And, and like, that was my probably only tweet of a fucking woman throwing herself on me. But oh, just... what, what's you must have had like fucking propositions oh, on? It was crazy. Like, yeah, I, to be honest, it's mad for me because I just think. I could walk into a into a bar or into a club before it's ever on TV. No one fucking screened my name. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No one tried that on me. Nothing. Yeah. You know. And then suddenly, and you, just it, because you just because you're on the TV, yeah. it is what it is. You know what I mean? It, it's just it's like you're put on this sort of pedestal, really. And mm. you, but you're just a normal person. Still the same I mean? person. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Mm. It's mad. It's mad. And especially how people must talk to you as if they've. They've known as if like you were a really good mate. Yeah. Well, you, you yeah. when you brought up as a kid, you mum and dad said, "Don't talk to strangers." Don't you? Yeah. So when strangers come up to me, they go, "All right, Jay." You're like, "All right, <laughs> oh, mate." <laughs> oh, mate. I see. And it's funny, like if I put a story up on Instagram or something, if I was like bantering with my brother or something, like, and then I forget about it, and then weeks later, I go, "Oh, that thing you did on your brother," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and you know, you just forget about it. You yeah. think you forget how many people see your shit. Yeah, yeah. Like it's mad. Mate, I've had things like that, mate. Yeah. And um, people come up to you and listen. It's really nice if people come up and say they listen to the podcast or they've read the book, and that's great. And I'm, yeah, carry on speaking to me if anyone sees me out or whatever. But what what is weird though is if sometimes someone says something to you, but obviously you don't know nothing about them. Yeah. But they like you say you've seen something, and um, <laughs> some lad came up to me about six months ago, <laughs> and he went to. Uh, I think I'd, I'd just been into town that morning and something I put something in town and he said uh, <laughs> random bloke walked past me went alright oh, mate you've just, uh, just got back from town <laughs> and I said what? <laughs> like, and he's like oh, i was just seen you were in town before weren't you and I was like yeah <laughs> like, it, it, and he, he just must have followed me on Instagram yeah 
And I was just like, yeah, oh yeah, just yeah, just got back, mate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward, Because I, I couldn't say anything back to him because I didn't fucking know who he was. So yeah. I couldn't as if to say, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. And I just went, oh, yeah, you're all right, mate, yeah. And he went, and then I think he realised maybe, and he went, yeah, yeah, sir. Anyway, he seemed a bit, lad. He realised. And it. I was like, what the fuck is that just being like that? It's know? mad, isn't it? It was like, funny. The same thing, people come up to you and they say stuff like that to you and they, I think they sort of forget that you don't know them at all. Mm. Or maybe they think that you do know them. <laughs> and, and like, and when you are just like awkward, a bit like, yeah, you're right. And then, and then like, because you're not really giving them much back because you don't know what the fuck to say. Yeah. They're a bit like, what's wrong with you? Like, you know, and you're just like, <laughs> you, but you don't want to say, I have no idea who you are, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, mate, though, it's, it, so it's, awkward. it's nice, mate, like you're in the public eye for like, for the right reasons for, for fucking being a talented artist so yeah, I guess, I'm guessing a lot of the, the feedback like looking enough touch wood same as me people have read the book and they, yeah. they've got nice things to say which is great yeah. same with you people are going fucking hell Jay that was great what you've done yeah it's yeah to be fair I don't really get much like anything like that anything that you know when people come up to me there's always nice stuff they're always saying nice stuff they're fans of the show and stuff like that so I've very rarely had anything negative to be honest mm. but uh, to be honest I don't really think there's anything negative to say it's a good show like it's, yeah. it's just it's yeah. funny it's like no one's an idiot on there uh, no one's an idiot like no one's full of themselves like it's just we just do what we do we just do it on telly mm. you know what I mean so yeah no I really enjoyed it like yeah, what, it was good crack. Like, what's what's the kind of plan then? I know you've said a few options and stuff and that, but like, what yeah. what can kind of you see? Well, to be honest, I, I I always look at things long term. I always have like when I like I said when I open my shop, I always plan for long term stuff. So I always always do that. Um, my long term my long term is to set my family up like financially. That's what that's that's my main goal. It always has been, to be honest. That's the first and foremost of it all. Um, to make enough money to set my family up, and and that's and that's it, pretty much, mate. So whatever I need to do within reason, obviously without selling my soul, because mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that for anything. I was saying that to Tom before, like, you know, you've got to be careful about certain things that you, you know, I've been offered stuff in the past before and I've like, you know, said no to certain things because it's just not me. It don't fit me as a person and what I'm about. And I, you know, like I said before, I'm on TV and I do, I do the stuff. I do what I do in my shop on TV. That's what I'm a tattooist and I do that on TV. So I've got to be careful about what, I, what else I do on TV because I don't want to just be famous for being famous. Do you know what mm. I mean? I want to be, fa- if I was going to be famous, I want to be famous for like, so far, like you, you're a great tattooist. Mm. That's the, the type of thing. I don't want negative stuff, you know, like even though no negative negativity comes with something, yeah. but you see where I'm going with yeah. it. But the end goal is to set my family up financially. So we'll see how that works out. But you know, I, like I'm in talks for other shows. I've got ideas myself that I want to do other TV shows and what what I, how I'd structure them and stuff. So I'm in talks with stuff like that. But TV's you have to be patient. Like it can take forever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So what well, so would you I'm have? A, to do that. Mate, I, I can't. I, I, it's a couple of weeks away until I can <laughs> say is what it? it is. Yeah, mate. So I, I'm going to be on TV in the summer. Oh yeah, yeah. But you can't say what. No. no, I'll tell you when we finish recording. But it was. Okay. Uh, it's like embarrassing. That's not embarrassing. It's a, it's a great show. Yeah, but. I'm, I'm going to come across like a knob on it. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I was shit on it. But um, but yeah, it's a funny show. But again, I was I was sitting there and you have to tell me what it's like. So do you have an agent or a manager? Because yeah. when I got this, someone rang me up and said, hi, Andy, do you, do you like doing this? And I was like, well, it's all right. And he went, okay, well, would you like to be on this? And I thought, well, number one, I'm not a celebrity. And two, I'm, I'm not... And um, anyway, it ends up going on it. It was a good laugh. Yeah. It, it was had, had a good. Uh, it was it was good fun. It was a good experience. But like, I can understand what you mean by if you go on too many show or you do two things mm. that people forget. Like Jay's the fucking t- he's a talented artist yeah. first and foremost. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if you, are you really kind of having to pick and choose and think actually? Yeah. I, yeah. In the, yeah. In the past, I've yeah, I've definitely done that. You know, mm. I've I've turned down a few things that I thought. Nah, it's not for me. Not not that it's you know, to stop anyone else doing it, but I, I, like I said, I know who I am as a person, and I know what would make me unhappy long term if I was to sell my soul now. Do you know what I'm mm, saying? Mm, yeah. And uh, I'm not going to do that. So, you know, I'd rather, st- like I said, I'm happy. So I'd rather stay here, not do that, than risk doing that and and, and yeah, then yeah. being unhappy back in this position again. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think you've got to be careful. Plus, you know, I only want to do stuff that is you know like tattoo fixes had a big effect on people in a good way 
you know, loads of people, we help loads of people with their tattoos, loads of people who've had like self-esteem problems. I've done portraits on people who've lost family members. It's a great show. It's funny. Anyone can watch it, even if you're not into tattoos. So all around it, it's a great show. Stuff like that, bang on. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, you have to take each opportunity and look at it and weigh up the pros and cons of it and then decide. But I, like I said, I'm happy where I am, so I've got nothing to lose. Mm. So it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now, with regards to your own tattoo, I mean, what's what's the fear that someone's travelled to get tattooed by you? Have you had any kind of... Yeah, I mean... Crazy I'm, fans who've come up from, I don't know... Yeah, I've had, like, people from Sweden, like... Flew in from Sweden? People from Sweden, yeah. Jesus, yeah. fucking hell. My brother's had people from Sweden flying for him as well, yeah. Yeah, it's mad, like... That's for mate, little tattoos. That's quality, that <laughs> Little tattoos, like, like stuff that's probably going to take you five minutes. And you literally would say to them in the email, you know, just, it's quite a long way. It's only going to take probably 10, 15 minutes. And they're just like, yeah, I just want to come to the shop, you know. And you're just like, that must be a good feeling that way. Mm. Oh, that's, that's, that's incredible, isn't it? Do you know what I've even said to people before? I had someone uh, who wanted to come from, I think it was Germany. And I was like, and they basically had written to me and said, oh, I really wanted to portrait off you and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's, that's really great. But you do know that there are some really amazing artists in Germany that are just as good or, or not better. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, don't mm. feel, you know, because some people aren't aware because they don't know where to look on the internet. They don't know where to look on Instagram. They don't know who they're looking for. They don't know the idea of a good tattoo, but they just recognize me off the mm. TV. So, which is great. But I also think you're going to spend a lot of money. You're going to spend a lot of money to fly here. And, you know, you could be in just as good a position in Germany. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you have to, I don't know, I just... I think that says a lot about you, mate. That. I think that's, yeah. that's really nice, that, mate, because I think there's a lot of people who'd be like, just looking at the pound signs, thinking, <laughs> yeah. come yeah. to me, come to me. <laughs> it's true, though, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I think that that's, says a lot about but you, you know mate. But the thing is, I off, when I do a tattoo, I offer a free touch-up session if it's needed as well. So everyone's skin heals differently. So if it, if, it, if it doesn't heal quite well, or, you know, sometimes people don't look after their tattoos enough, they don't listen enough and they don't they don't look after them enough so it depends how it heals and so I'll offer a free touch up session I don't know how if many people do that but I don't know of many people that do that but again if you've got someone coming from Germany and they, they think they think they're going to come over for a one time thing and they might need a touch up they got to fly back for it mm. and if they go to someone else in Germany they might tattoo differently to me and change the whole look of that tattoo yeah. But yet they'll have paid me a certain amount of money to get it done, come over here to have it done, and, and it looks different when they get it done by someone else, touched yeah. up. Mm. So I have to factor that into the fact that they might have to come back. So if you're coming from long distance, I just want to make you aware <laughs> what you might have to go through. <laughs> and then you weigh it up and decide if you still want to do that. If you still want to do that, I'll be here waiting yeah. to tattoo you. Like, so. But yeah, that's, like I said, I've had people come over and it's just like... Fucking, it's great, isn't it? Mm. It's, no, it is, about, mate, it's insane how, 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 I suppose, 2015, how four years can just change, you know, yeah. how suddenly just like that. It's, yeah. it's a strange old world, isn't it? Yeah, and it changes for the people around you as well. Like, mm. you know, my friend, my pals and stuff, stop seeing people that recognise you and stuff and they're just like, they're just weirded out by it. They're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. Is going? I remember talking about back to the PAs. I took one of my mates and my brother to this PA in Bangor in, in uh, North Wales once, yeah. And um, I was like, I'd done a load by this point and I, I told them about it and they were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I was like, they're, they're fucking mad. Like, he was like, <laughs> he was like, they were like, yeah. Do you, I said, there'll be quite a lot of people here. And he was like, they were like, all right. Yes. Walked in, mate, 1,200 people in a queue in the club, Fuck in and around the club and in hell. the queue. Jesus. Yeah. And they, mate, they fucking announced me on the stage like I was fucking Justin Bieber, mate. It was <laughs> embarrassing, yeah? Oh, God. What are you expected to do at these things? Well, you, you see a lot of, like, the, the, like the guys off Geordie Shore and all that, they're dead confident guys, aren't they? So they'd be great at these PAs. They, they, they'd interact proper. I'm quite shy and introvert like that. So, like, I come out and they'll go, Jay Hutton. And I walk out and I'll just be like... <laughs> all right no one can hear me saying all right they're all screaming i'm just like what's happening and they're all like he's fucking boring oh that was madness though isn't it yeah it's crazy once they mate they brought me out the floor like michael jackson once. <laughs> yeah. with steam he goes well just just get into this lift and i said into into the lift he goes yeah they're gonna announce you and you're gonna come up on the stage and i was like mate, my heart was fucking pounding i was thinking oh my god <laughs> dorman's in this lift with me i was thinking shit and they go, and now, 
tattoo bit. I was thinking, oh my God, it's like a fucking ring entrance. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, he goes, Jay Hearn oh, comes up, but fucking doors open, mate. There was like a flood of people here and balconies up here, a balcony across the thing full of people and then two staircases up there full of people. Flashing lights and I was just like, Jesus. Mate, what do you do? Like, yeah, what, what I, do you do? Like, yeah. I don't know. Always, I, always, do you, do you get involved in drinking or you just. Or... Oh, I, I need to have a drink, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to have a drink to settle myself. You know what? I'm, I'm like, I am quite a confident person, but I reckon I even I'd be a bit like. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what do you do, though? That's it. Unless you're going to be like bladder jumping around, I'm just not that sort of person. Yeah. So, like, mate. I bet some people have been well disappointed. <laughs> on on the flip side of that, though, mate, when you've been on shows and stuff like that, have you ever been mega starstruck? Yeah, I, m- I remember being at um, TV Choice. We got nominated for a TV Choice Award, so we went to the TV Choice Awards, and I remember seeing like Ant and Deck there. Yeah, and I was just like, "Fucking Ant and Deck there!" Like, and you're trying to act normal because you're nominated for awards as well. So yeah. you just, you just, it's, mate, it's mad. And I remember Deck walked past me, and I was like, "How you doing? You're right." And and he was fucking well sound, mate. And he shook me hand, and he goes, "Oh, I love your show." And I thought, "Fucking hell, he knows who I am." <laughs> I was like, "Shit, yeah, he actually knows who I am." Yeah, yeah, it's dead surreal, mate. And they, but then you're in a room full of like people that you just see, you've seen, seen all TV. your life on TV and mm. stuff. And you think, "Oh my god, there's so and so there, there's so and so." I met that on Deck once. Yeah, I was Did on you? a show. Where, do you ever remember the show Red or Black? No. Ah, the um, like a full on game show, but it was yeah. quite. Um, I fucking do, yeah. So basically, I, I got asked to go on that, and um, I nearly won like fucking a million pounds. Yeah. Did you? Obviously, nearly. I've <laughs> 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 been living that damn bizarre lifestyle. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they hosted the show. You, you literally had to pick red or black for a series of things. I got like so many rounds in there. Yeah. That's mad. Yeah. But you only won if you you only took money home if you won a million. Yeah. So you start with like eight people and it get narrowed down to one. And then you um, you play against the computer or, or, or some big like roulette wheel. How have you been? All, how have you got? How did you manage to I get? Think, fuck no, mate. It's like social. You've got the hell of a life, you. Yeah, are. <laughs> mate, I, yeah. madness, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, oh yeah, so I've, so my t- my little TV role goes from um, standing at the bar on Coronation Street. Oh, did you? I've been uh, yeah, been on the back of that. So, um, and th- this may sound like I'm trying to put myself out there. <laughs> I swear to God, I've been. Someone said, "Do you want to do this?" And I went, "Yeah, all right, yeah." Like one of <laughs> That's them. That's good. Um, Downtown Abbey. That was fun. Um, yeah, this game show. Yeah, I think that was bad. Eh? Tattoo fixes. Have you got an IMDb? <laughs> <laughs> Would you do more TV stuff? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's fun, mate. That's that's yeah. one thing. That's what it is. Like, it's this, cool, this, isn't it? this this latest one that'll be out in the summer. I think they sent me they sent me like a press release picture. Um, oh, that's so funny people who know me will be like what the fuck are you doing on this show <laughs> it's one of them like do you know what I mean it's a good, it's a good show but yeah nah, it, it is a lot of fun isn't it yeah. like Tattoo Fixes when I done How Are You Man it was, it was really good fun yeah it's good crap um, and yet this show that I just done recently that's out in the summer was, was just really cool um, yeah so yeah I would yeah yeah it's good I think as well like you, you've seen Tattoo Fixes so you were there but like we get all the credit because we're the ones on the show but there's so many mm. people in there that are involved yeah. in the, on the set that make it work like you literally just could not do it without them like that and it, it's a proper like because you work together for so many hours a day every day mm. you should proper become well good pals and like everyone on set is like a big family it made its quality it was well good Mate, i remember when me and me and andy went down to soccer am yeah to soccer inter- good. interview tubes oh yeah and um just we were in the crowd so but even just watching that and just being yeah. on you know mm. all the like you know there's like someone who's running the whole like yeah. set set thing yeah. it's just like it's just chaos constantly yeah. and you think fucking it's take over right though isn't it you know yeah. it's a long day like to, to record and stuff that's so the thing like the hours that you put in on TV it's long yeah. isn't it yeah you know it's cropped down isn't it it's obviously to however long the episode is but you know it takes a long time to film mm. um, but especially like for, t- for tattoos because like we could you know, like we filmed the consultation and then we might have a, like a nine hour tattoo in as well. Mm. And then you've got to show them it in the mirror. That's got to be filmed. You yeah. Know, it's a long ass day. And then go again the next day and the next day and the next, next day. day. So, yeah. it's, But, you know, it's, it's it's been great. Like it's been fun. But yeah, they are long days, aren't they? Yeah. Really long. That Downton Abbey was fucking long as well. Yeah. Again, I was only in three scenes. I was there for about two or three days. Yeah. And you speak to the makeup artists and yeah. they're in at like four or five in the morning mm. working until eight, nine at night. Yeah. You're like, 
fucking hell. Yeah, like, people don't see the work that goes in behind these programs. Like, you know, there's mm. so much that goes into it planning before you even get to the day. There's so much planning that is involved in it. Like, it's, oh, yeah, it's some the same work. I, I was thinking some of, like, some of these films <clears> when you've got the, uh, hundreds of extras and organising it, all yeah. of that, every mm. single day. Everyone's, you know, it just what, it fucking you know, blows my yeah, mind. But. it is. It's mad. I've done a couple of adverts as well, and... Um, I once got flown to Japan to do a Toyota advert. Did you? Yeah, for the Winter Paralympics. <laughs> they uh, <laughs> keep <I'll> coming. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> In a minute, he'll be like he's a fucking multi-millionaire yeah. ace-list celebrity in fucking Japan or somewhere now. <laughs> I, mean, I just jump at these. Listen, I'm like, yeah, okay. So it's actually a funny story. So and it's so lucky how this worked out. So uh, a good mate of mine was trying to swim across the uh, the channel raising money for Macmillan. And he said, I said, listen, I'll come down and help you. I'll be on your support boat. I'll try and help you. He said, but I don't know when I'm going to be doing the swim because you've got to wait for the tide to be right. So um, he said, we might be down there for like five days or a week. And he said, you need your passport as well because it's on international water or something. So I, I took me running like down with me because I thought, if I'm going to be in the hotel, I can go to the gym. Yeah, yeah. So thankfully I had my passport with me and my running leg and clothes for a week. As I'm down there, I get a phone call off of a mate to do a lot of work with. Normally, though, just motivational speaking. And he rings me and he says, where are you? I said, I'm down in Dover. He says, um, can you can you get to the airport tomorrow? And I'm like, why? He said, well, you might be going to Japan. I'm like, what for? He says, I don't know yet, but can you go? And I'm like thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, long story short, my mate done the swim that night, thankfully, otherwise I wouldn't have went. So we got to swim out the way. And when all that, they all went back up to Liverpool, my mate said, mate, this gig's definitely on fucking get to Heathrow I'll send and I'm like what for like where am I going he said I don't even know yet just get to fucking Heathrow thankfully I had my passport with me and my running blade and it turned out it was an advert for Toyota it's actually still on there you can, you can see it now yeah, yeah YouTube it yeah, yeah it's for the Paralympics <laughs> it was on and it, mate, I flew into Japan to a place called uh, Toyota City that's like the, that's what it's called were you on your own yeah 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 I fucking just flew on my own I had some guy pick me up at the airport in Japan. Um, I was there two nights and then spent all day in the, this Toyota fucking factory. There was a Canadian ice skater there. I hope no Canadian hockey player. A couple of Canadian uh, figure skaters. And um, yeah, fucking all just got flung in together now to do some recording. But again, as you'll see from this advert now, all we had to do was like, as if you're going to do a race like that and then run up and down a few times. Literally, that was it, but all day. It's like, fucking mad, yeah. What do I type into your... Like, uh... Yeah, Paralympic advert. <clears throat> fucking hell. No, it's none of them <clears throat> ones, yeah. But it's funny, it gets... Um, uh, no, it's none of them. Uh, no, it's not there. I'll have to try and find it. It was it no yeah, winter winter that. Paralympics type winter in Paral- Toyota yeah. winter Paralympics yeah but mate fuck me there was, a, there was a lot of money in those adverts as well I was thinking fucking hell this is alright <laughs> <laughs> I'm flown here for this um, oh no I can't even ask none of them I'll find it and send it to you so I'll put it yeah, on yeah, the link yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. but it's funny though like yeah, you know even funny. the TV thing as well the tattoo story have you you must have been sent it actually there's a Dutch TV show, right? And every few months, someone will WhatsApp it to me. There's a Dutch TV show, mate. This will definitely be on YouTube, Dutch TV, You'll Never Walk. And they've watched Tattoo Fixers. And it's a kind of comedy show, like The Last Leg or something like that. I think I've seen it. And they're fucking taking the piss out of the tattoo in, in fucking Dutch. Um, Dutch TV, I, You'll Never Walk. Mm, tattoo? Yeah, tattoo? Type in tattoo. Yeah, yeah Never Walk Tattoo. And um, that is there, yeah. F- this that one. second one, yeah. <laughs> listen, watch this. So I get sent this all the time. <laughs> Just load the Dutch comedians taking the piss out of me. <laughs> When I was 17, I went off and during the Royal Marines. It was while in Afghanistan that I was uh, caught in an IED explosion. My leg was really badly damaged. So then I decided to have the leg amputated 
I was put on the anaesthetic and woke up two hours later as an amputee. 13,000 views this has got. 13? <laughs> 13. The good news is the operation went really, really well. It's just okay, well, we the bad news then. He said, my friend's tattoo looks a little bit different. He's unfortunately cut off the word alone. So the tattoo now reads you'll never walk. <laughs> What are they saying? Fuck, <laughs> 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 well, how mad's that? that I, is that? I get sent that me every couple of months. <laughs> that so, is mad, isn't it? That's how big the show was, do you know yeah. what I mean? And like, it just was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you oh. know what's mad? Because um, obviously it aired in the UK and then I remember just having like so many messages from like French people in, in, <laughs> in French. And I would be like, why are all these French people messaging me? And then I found that it, it was going out over there. Really? So then, yeah, we had a load of French fans, and then now, like, it's in like Brazil and all sorts of places all over the world now. Well, someone yeah. just messaged me on there. There was loads of messages. Someone's put hi from Venezuela. Some yeah, like it's mad. Like, Venezuela. Yeah, there. people are seeing it all over the world now. Like, but it's mad because you get all these like foreign languages message, like messaging you in these foreign languages, and you just like <laughs> I can't even respond. I don't even know what you say to me. <laughs> but like they they're obviously they, they they're like get, I'm surprised you're not getting it actually because I think they just start they started in like season one so it's like now mm. feel like I think when like Miami Inc and all that was over here I think we were a couple of years behind here when it just aired so yeah, they were so like they, two years ahead there yeah, yeah. so I think it's the same things happening here so you might start getting yeah. French followers as well you can totally understand though because I actually got tattoos in it in LA in LA Inc did you? By, uh, it wasn't by Kat Von D, but she was there, like, opposite me. Yeah. I was over in LA, and I wanted to go and find the um, the tattoo parlor that she worked at. Yeah. And thankfully, just just got a walk in, and, yeah. and he tattooed me back. I got, I've got the last post tattooed on me back. Oh, yeah. And uh, But Kat Von D, she's fucking fit as well, just like there. <laughs> I just kind of stared at her while getting tattooed. But it was a, it was a great show, wasn't it? Yeah, it, LA Inc. was quality as well, it, yeah. And it did open up your eyes to... to, to to tattooing yeah that started the ball rolling I think publicly for people to you know see into the depths of tattooing a bit more that was a great show I mean it made me want to do it so yeah yeah exactly yeah and so and Tattoo Fixers to be fair I think Tattoo Fixers is the most well it is the biggest UK show uh, tattoo show ever mm. you know there's not been another one that's as big as that mm. so it really did take off yeah any other questions Tom no mate I'm good mate two hours is it two hours? Yeah, so I, I was going to ask at the start. I should have asked him, you got to go anyway. No, 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 Rich, mate. Yeah. Nah, mate, I, mate, I've loved chatting to you. I think yeah, it's, too, it's, mate. Mate, it's inspirational as well, mate, to see the hard work that you've put in me from, from teens you, to where you are now, mate. 100%, so, yeah. Thank you very much. It's definitely, thanks for mate. having me. Yeah, mate, I've really, really enjoyed it, yeah. Cheers. I knew it would be good, so thank you for this, nah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Nice one, Jay. Boss, Cheers, mate. mate. Thank you.